Welcome to this week's edition of the Outdoor Call Radio. We are live at the uh, Iowa Deer Classic at booth 905. I got Larry Mack with me. He is uh, on the uh, mic number two today. And we uh, we got in here extra early to get set up, and everybody's just having a really, really good day. Hey, man, Larry Mack, good morning. Good morning. So, uh, Deer Classic yesterday, uh, pretty good attendance. Uh, we had a lot of people come through, uh, which was really, really cool. We got a lot of stuff going on in the booth that we're gonna, we'll tell you about through the next two hours. Morning, Bryce. Hi, just good to see you this morning. Thanks for watching. Uh, we, let me tell real quick, thanks to uh, Three Rivers Boat and RV Storage for helping us with the show. You, if you need a, a place to go steer, store all your gear, I encourage you to go down to Three Rivers Boat and RV Storage. Uh, they're locally and down in Carlisle. 60 bucks a month will get you a 12 by 50 assigned spot. Secure gates 24-7. Security cameras always there. Just call them at 515-822-1362. And Dick, Tracy, or Danielle will make an appointment with you. Fill out an application, and they will help you find your spot, which is nice. Good morning, John. Good morning, Richard. Good Richard, I saw Richard Young... Richard the Beard Young, that's his new handle, Richard the Beard Young. He had a great beard going yesterday. So uh, go, go tell Three Rivers Boat and RV Storage Outdoors Dan sent you. We'd appreciate that. So uh, really nice crowd yesterday. Uh, we got Ryan, we got Rye Rye up here from uh, Respect the Game TV, Larry Mack, uh, the, the, uh, the, patriarch. <laughs> the patriarch. The patriarch of Respect the Game TV. I'm the grand patriarch. I'm the old man. So anyway, Larry Mack, uh, good attendance last night. Um, a lot of people came through. Good to see everybody. Yeah, yeah. For a Friday, it was uh, for a Friday. It was really uh, it was pretty busy, and I'm excited to see what today's going to bring. But I'm expecting a pretty big crowd today. Well, one thing we got going on in the booth that's exciting is uh, Josh was Josh uh, Ryan's uh, brother, Josh Huser. 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 Uh, was nice enough. Ryan brought uh, Josh's monster buck. He shot in Missouri last year on Respect the Game TV and uh, two, 260 inch non typical whitetail. It's, I believe, the third or fourth biggest deer taken in Missouri. Uh, if you get a chance, come out to the Deer Classic. It's right here. You can take a picture of it. Josh will be here and you can meet Josh and uh, you can hear the whole story. Larry, the coolest thing about that, of course, is the size of the deer. I've been hunting 35 years. I've never seen a deer like that on the hoof, never. Yeah, uh, I mean, me either. <laughs> but the, but the, yeah, but you know, the, just the history that Ryan and Josh had with that deer. Yeah, I, I would highly advise stopping by the booth, talking to Josh, and and uh, hearing the story. The, he named the deer Lewis, and uh, uh, the story of Lewis will be coming soon too, where people can watch it. But to be able to hear it firsthand from Josh, it's a uh, it's a it's a pretty special story. If you haven't seen it, uh, this deer was on the cover of North American Whitetail Magazine as well. Uh, stories in there. They did a great job of covering uh, this whole story. It's just, uh, you know, it really, it's the ups and downs of hunting. Uh, number one, it just happens to be on a deer of a world-class caliber. It's, uh, it's a pretty special, pretty special story and, and awesome deer. Uh, congrats to Josh again, because like I said, he put in a, a lot of work and uh, had a lot of heartache uh, that ended with a lot of happiness. So yeah, that's, it's awesome. Ryan, hop over here. Get on the mic three down there. Ryan's here. He might as well get in here. I mean, you don't sit there and walk around. Morning, Ryan. Morning, everyone. Hey, how long How long did you guys know that deer was there? Um, we really, really started, you know, after... You can pick that up if you want. You don't have to bend over. <laughs> after a couple years. I mean, the last three years, it was when we really, you know, had a good beat on him and really started paying attention to what he was doing. But the last two years is when he, I mean, absolutely blew up. We knew he was something really special yeah well i know you guys were sick last year because you saw him and then he disappeared was, yeah, and yeah was, or is that the year before well, no that was that was pretty much every year that every was year his MO. Yeah. i mean he would we'd have him all summer and then he would leave we get a picture of him here there we got a picture of him about two miles down the road at one point i mean he was just so hard to track down 
I mean, but this year he everything changed. He became a homebody. He stayed on us a lot longer, gave us a chance. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a great story. Gary, good morning. Scuba Steve, good morning, Scuba. Good to see you, Nathan. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate you. James, Chris DeMont. Chris DeMont. There's Chris. You, there's Chris. We were talking about you the other day, Chris. Dan Anderson. I had to apologize to Chris, by the way, <laughs> because he sent me a message on on uh, Instagram, and, and it slipped through the crack. And I, I was actually sitting there, and I was like, man, I forgot to I was sending the message. I was like, man, he sent this a while back. I felt bad, I, so I answered him last night so i was like yeah. it's like, like let one slip through the cracks there sorry chris yeah if you're going to try to get a hold of larry word of advice don't message him on social emailing because <laughs> he, he'll see that the, he gets so many messages it's ridiculous uh john good morning buddy good to see you james good morning uh let's see did i get everybody i'm trying to make sure i got everybody thanks everybody for getting up rick good morning rick where's my buddy rick so hey, uh uh when he got that deer was was you were with him or was your dad with him? No, he was by himself. He was by. Yeah, he filmed he, that by himself. Well, he had he didn't have a chance to film it actually because, um, you know. Oh, I thought he to, got you, that. No, if you get to you get get all see the supporting those, stuff, the, you know, yeah. the, you'd hear the whole story and you yeah. can hear from him when he's here. But when he went in to hunt that morning or that afternoon, his stand had gotten stolen. Well, he had his cam all his camera equipment up in the tree with it, and they took that as well. So he wasn't able to film it and ended up just you know. You know what? He deserves that deer. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, they steal his cameras and everything all, every year. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, yeah. You got to come and listen to the whole story. We don't want to yeah. give it all away. Yeah, it's a, I could tell you this much. So, me and Ryan were actually in. We we're in Kentucky, weren't we, Ryan? Mm -hmm. And I mean, to have Josh has got a super, uh, probably just a strong passion for whitetails, as as we all do. But and you have to appreciate the work that he puts in to be able to number one scout a deer like like that or just deer in general and then uh you know watch this deer grow but uh, to, when we were in kentucky and we got the call that uh he you know he was successful that evening it was it was uh just knowing josh uh and his passion for it it was i knew something when he was talking to ryan on the phone either something was really seriously wrong or he just shot that deer. <laughs> it was, yeah, uh, you know, it was, it was deer a pretty season, awesome You moment. get that phone call right yeah. about, you know, that 20 minutes right before dark and your phone starts ringing, you know, something happened. And when I saw his name pop up on my phone, I, I, I yeah. just instantly knew that he's, you know, yeah. he, he might have gotten him. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Rocco, out there in Pennsylvania. Hey, Rocco. Rocco wants to know what kind of wood is this? What kind of wood is this? <laughs> I don't know. He said, what kind of wood is this? It's, it's, uh, it's a hybrid of hickory and oak. If you put the two together, it's the hardest wood on the market. I have no idea what he's talking about. Where's he seeing wood at? Huh? Yeah, I don't. That's kind of this. Hey, Rocco, this is a family show. <laughs> uh, morning, Dave Jones. Good to see you, <laughs> Rocco. There you go. So, hey, Rye, that's uh, you know, it's good to see that you and your brother and uh, now and your your other brother, Dalton. Dalton's a, the fisherman of the family, right? Yeah, he's a pretty good stick. Yeah, I mean he's a he's a pro, pro crappie guy. Yeah, he amateur pro or how's that? No, uh, he kind of just bounces around through all the tournaments right there in Missouri, local in Kansas. Well, it's nice to see that three of you can actually do some great stuff in the outdoors, and you know that way your dad's always got something to eat. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Little Kent shout out there. Well, that's another. That's a whole other story in itself too with Dalton because. Dalton had a really, really big deer as well that he had a ton of history with, as and which is another cool story. And uh, it was just what was it, Brian? Three, four days, four, four days before Josh shot his deer. Yeah. He, he connected with his target buck. No, he did. Yeah, Dalton smoked yeah, a yeah. giant. Yeah, one hundred ninety-nine inch. I mean, I yeah, mean, monster, monster deer. Yeah, yeah. typical. Yeah. yeah, and and it kind of got overshadowed a little bit right there when Josh shot. You know, Josh. Shoots a 260 inch deer. Four days later, I mean, everybody yeah. was looking at me like, "Hey, what are you gonna shoot?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, you had a good deer. Oh yeah, Kansas was good to me. You had a really great deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You been. know, honestly, I love your. I love watching that. Like, uh, but I, but I feel I know how you hurt. I know how much that hurts. That's happened to me several times over the years. Yeah. Well, everybody, you know, it's it's hunting. It's you know? hunting. It is. It's hunting. It's, and and we show it. Things happen. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the thing. I mean, it's you can't just just show all the success 
all the time because, you know, there's a lot of times where, you know, th things just happen. Deer react uh, and, you know, you miss. There's, you know, there's just things happen in the woods. And, and for us to be able to, to share those moments as well, I think it's vitally important too because you got to learn how to, to deal with those moments as well because it will make you better. Yeah. Hey, we got uh, Ralph D. Martino. Hey, hey, bonus seller. Hey, you got to go to the classic and we make you an offer you can't <laughs> refuse. I'm the godfather of payment. That's right. <laughs> Nobody does asphalt like I do. You come over, call us, we'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Ralph D. Martino paving in New York. You need a parking lot, I got you covered. Yeah, yeah. we got some blue. We got gallo, gallo ghoul for you to eat, too. Hey, I'll tell you what, old, old Ralphie. <laughs> he can cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can cook, and, yeah. and he's definitely, uh, we, we meet up with Ralphie out Triple H out there with Donovan, and uh, we have a good, good old time out there. Yeah, you roll into deer camp when uh, the godfather of paving uh, of uh, asphalt's out there. You, you're going to see uh, octopus and squid and lobsters and it's like he had the whole, the whole East Coast flown into Triple H. I mean, Little Lincoln, Kansas, and it's like a seafood smorgasbord. You know Ralph's in town. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Godfather. Hey, John, thank you for stopping by, you and your lovely wife. Always good to see you guys. Good morning, Pete. Good to see you guys. So, uh, I, well, let's just, uh, Deer Classics got a lot of things going, working classes here. Kurt's going to be here in a little bit, uh, hopefully, and uh, we'll talk with him. But uh, we got uh, just an amazing amount of deer for you to come out and see. That's always the star and the attraction of the show. A lot of things are here. Uh, we got, we're got we right across from Forerunner Blinds. And Larry Mack, I'm going to tell you something. Oh, hey, first off, I got. can I make the announcement? What? You know, the, the sign deal we got last night. Oh, Norlander? Can we can we do that? <laughs> that? That one? Yeah, all right. Now, here's the deal. You know, I've been telling you about how good these alpaca socks are from Norlander Sock Company. Well, this this I, I'm going to make the official announcement this morning live on the air. Our, uh, the uh, Norlander Sock Company is now the official sock company of Respect the Game TV mm -hmm. and the Outdoor Call Radio Network. So, thank you, Steph. Yeah, thank you. We're super excited. Yeah. So, and when we say alpaca, that means don't go look up sock company's name, Paca. Go Norlander Sock Company. Yeah. Had some people uh, actually buy the wrong stuff. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. So, happens. yeah, our feet's going to have, our, we gave our feet a treat this year <laughs> with Norlander. Uh, hey, we're right across from uh, Forerunner Blinds. Larry and I were looking at these yesterday. Um, you know, if somebody's got uh, a lot of ground and they, they like ground blind hunting um, and they they don't have anybody to help them. Those these new blinds that uh, the guys over at Four Forerunner those are slick. They they are they're mobile. I mean quick. If you if you're into brushing blinds in, you can um literally you can move around wherever you want. It's got wheels uh, on it. Uh, definitely roomy inside of it. The windows are you know uh, good for either gun or bow, crossbow, whatever. But like I said, plenty of room. Yeah, definitely impressive. Yeah and. Uh, you know, you get it. You know, you got somebody that's got a couple of kids that go with you. You know, that's something you can leave out there and and uh, take the skin off of it, and just you don't have to move it. You can leave it in, out, the, out the farm for sure. Yeah, it's slick. You the, you got to come out and see Sean, our buddy Sean, and and uh, look at the, some of the stuff. They got some pretty amazing stuff. Uh, season tw season twelve for respect the game. Season, season twelve. Man. Season so twelve. It's uh, this is are we going in? We're going into thirteen. Or is this going, going into 12, 12 right? 13, uh, 12. 12, yeah. So this is our, so this turkey season's our 12th season. Yes. And I'm, I'm anxious to kick her off. Yeah, that alarm went off at 5.15 this morning. It's like, I'm not going to be able to kill anything. Why am I getting up? Yeah. <laughs> it's too early. Uh, <laughs> morning, Jake Pike. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, George Lynch, everybody. The legend, the legend of Sleepy Iowa. Old George. George, legendary gear. I gotta go over and see George. I didn't get a chance to go over there last night. Morning, Jerry. How's it going, Jerry? Good to see you. Hey, Shiloh, God bless you guys too, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Jake and Jake and his family came over. Mike Simmons, good morning. That's nice to, nice of you. Appreciate that. I'm looking forward to uh I'm looking forward to turkey hunting. I I that's I think that's still my favorite thing I love to do. You know, and I know you love all of it, so yeah, yeah, I don't, uh, you don't have, you yeah, don't discriminate. If it's in season, I'm, we're going to be going after it. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of how I look at it. It's, yeah. uh, but I'm super pumped up to, 
for the whole for the guys and everybody to be able to get out in the woods and uh, chase some turkeys. It's funny when we went to Dave Dave Jones' house. Uh, when was it? Friday? The other day? Yesterday? Uh, yesterday? Yeah, yeah, Friday. Yeah. Yeah, we when we pulled in, there was two two strutters uh, out out strutting around, showing oh. off, and yeah, that'll that'll make you if that don't make you get the itch, I don't know what does. Yeah, oh, I'm telling you, I'm ready. And it's always deer season. You know, even when the season's out, it's still deer season. We went, we got a chance uh, to go shed hunting, and you found you found some nice sheds. And you know, this time of year is a great time to strategize for the upcoming fall. I mean, look at all look at all the deer sign, and I mean, we saw scrapes, rubs, tra- pounded highways. I mean, they weren't trails; they were highways. Yeah, right now, I mean, if you're going to scout for next year, now's the time to do it. Here within the next you know, three weeks or so, just get out, be able to really learn your property. You can see how deer are utilizing your property and, and it's a good time to, to really plan for the next season. And all in all, while you're looking for sheds or whatever, just keep those mental notes in your head of, of cause there's about every property that, I, that I've ever hunted, I've had to move stuff based upon where I originally set, set up cause things do change. There may be a, a big tree got struck by lightning fell over, may change the way they move their you know, where they're entering a the field or how they're using the creek or whatever. Uh, so, so yeah, always, uh, this is a great time of year to, when you're out shed hunting, to, to really, you know, note where you're seeing those highways, those main travel corridors uh, for this next come, upcoming season. You know, and I, you know, I know I talk about Onyx on the show. Uh, Larry, you I mean, you use, you use that technology all the time. How many waypoints you got on your phone? 500? I don't, I don't know a lot. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a lot. I'm not exaggerating. It's a, it's, it's like a, a, a plethora of red little dots, man. It's yeah. just, I mark, I literally mark everything because I mean, I can't remember if I'm walking a lot or, or whatever. I can't remember a lot of it. So I just mark it on my phone. I can always go back and look and that way if I'm going to hang stands or I need to move stands or change locations, uh, you know, I can always go back and know that that mark's there for a reason. Then I can go back there and look, and I can, you know, place it where it needs to be or well, where I think it needs to be. Well, that's nice because uh, that's nice because you know you get out there in the fall and say the farmers have got the, the crops in, and I mean you can walk right to that spot. You know where it's at. You know you don't have to weave in and out of the fields. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, and yeah. I mean it's it's been a game changer for for me all the way down to marking, you know, marking food plots, marking food sources. And I say this a lot too, you know, it's just, you knowing your property is important, but knowing the property that surrounds you as well is yeah. good. What I mean by that is knowing, is it cropland? Is it CRP? Is it just nothing but timber? Uh, just knowing the property that surrounds you will help you learn your property uh, better, uh, in my opinion, because you'll know kind of how, the, you'll, you'll learn even more of why the deer are traveling the way they are, why they're utilizing your property. Uh, you know that way so and i've once i started focusing on that i you know my success rate went up tremendously uh just by being able to hone in on on where the deer are constantly moving yeah ryan how does it feel to film him when you only have to sit one time um i was treated as well yeah i, I i've I, never seen anything like it in my life i you know, i just it's an enigma to me it's a it's a it's an enigma wrapped in a in a in a in a Bacon wrap question. <laughs> no, it's luck like is what it is. Yeah. It's luck. I mean, we, <laughs> we put the intel in with the camera. I mean, we, you know, everybody's trail cameras running and and everything. But uh, you know, ever people that have watched the show obviously know that I, I really, really enjoyed decoying deer, and I was always a good place to do that. And uh, you know, we have the right time of year, and uh, you know, getting the deer with the right move. I, we just happen to have be in the right place at the right time be able to catch one in the right mood yeah well you do i've never seen anybody get the you always get the pissy deer i mean they come in all thick their ears back their eyes rolled red and they're doing that they're doing that angle tack on the decoy thing i mean you always seem to find there, the pissy. there's one. a secret to that and i'm gonna tell you what it yeah. is it's called pure white tail on your base layers <laughs> <laughs> on your base layers i've tried it in you my dust bo- up, i've tried it in dust my boots up with so. some of that premium yeah. buck yeah and put a little bristled up and, and tarsal land on your boots. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. There you go. That's, good stuff. That's that's, Larry, he's on it, man. Kansas and Iowa treated him good. Hey, good morning, Travis. Uh, hey, Mountain Man. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, 
Uh, Jerry, uh, we totally agree. Rupert's roost and peace turkey calls are legit. We uh, we well, keep I'm telling you right now. We got them here at the show. They're, they're yeah, you need a uh, yeah. Come by and run one of them, up and and you'll you'll uh, you'll see what a turkey call is supposed to sound like. They're super uh, they're super user friendly, and uh, I've I've been impressed since the first time I, I I picked them up, and that's and I've ran a lot of turkey calls, but uh, it really. They just run really nice. They're really user friendly. They sound like a turkey. They got good highs and lows. So I'm, I'm uh, super pleased and, and excited about a partnership with Rupert's. Yeah, Todd Rupert's a good fella. Always in a good mood. So always in a good mood. Uh, I need to see what Andrew is texting me. Okay, he's back. I tell you, we're gonna hit a real quick break. When we come back, we're gonna tell you about some of the contests we got going on at the booth. And then uh, we got some other stuff to tell you as well. So keep it right here. No flippy floppy on 1350 ESPN. You're heading out on your morning hunt well before sunrise. So you can stay undetected. You're heading out on your morning hunt. Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly yeah. where you're going? Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly where you're going? Shut up. You're always picking on me. I'm not here. I'm just listening to you. always picking on me. That's a sophisticated, uh, sophisticated, sophisticated out there. It also allows the mark and save your parking spots, scrapes. Do you want Andrew? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you, bud. I can't. He won't let me put the headphones on, Andrew, because he's afraid. Me and you are going to take over. Do what? <laughs> he won't let me put the headphones on, Andrew. No. He don't want me to hear you. Well, it's because I got them so, feeding through the. You want to know where you are and have the ability to save information that will help you be a better hunter. Go download the Onyx Hunt app at your app store today. Let's talk about morning, a Bill. An Iowa story about a dream that took several years to come true. Randy, good morning. Travis Honeycutt, Todd, Semper Fi, buddy. Randy, good morning. Hello, Randy. Hey, Randy, morning, buddy. Well, it's going to be busy today. Shoulder to shoulder. It's going to be shoulder to shoulder today. Good morning, Richard. Hey, Andrew. Morning, Brian. Oh, we're both ready, Randy. Thunder chicken time, buddy. We're ready. Yep. I've been ready since January, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I enjoy, watch, I enjoy watching them swim in some Crisco. <laughs> well, I enjoy That's it. the best part of eating them. <laughs> Velociraptors, man. <laughs> Y'all need to get down here and look at this deer. This deer is amazing. Boy, some big deer. There's some big deer showed up last night. We saw a shed from Canada last night. What was that shed? A hundred inches? Oh, it was, I don't know. I never seen a shed that big in my life. Crazy. Morning, Nath. Yep. Yipper. I just got my truck wrapped up in Chase decals and Ames, and they did an amazing job. Josh, Bob, and the staff took the time to find out exactly what my needs were, what my goals were going to be, and they went to work designing a wrap that just pops off my VR7. Now, wherever I go, folks will be talking about the Outdoor Call Radio Network. If you need help getting your message out or showing people what exactly your business does, I want you to pick up the phone and call Josh at 515 292 6466. That's 515 292 6466. Got one minute. Or go Thanks, online Andrew. to chasedecals.com and start planning your campaign today. 
today. Good morning, Rick. Rick the mailman, Elliot. That's why your food needs to fit and perform when you're outdoors. It's my mailman. Catch the footwork has been helping folks on their adventures for over 40 years. Oh, get the mailman. He always delivers. Always delivers. Whether you're out elk hunting, chasing moose, or whitetail, riding snowmobile trails, or ice fishing in sub-zero weather, Itasca Footwear will hey, provide you not only a great hey, fit, but comfort a, for all the Itasca has sizes and styles for the whole family. Thank you want to give them the same comfort and fit that you look for in footwear so everyone can enjoy their day. Look for Itasca Footwear, trusted by millions of customers at most major family-owned retail. Morning, Sean. Don't forget, hey, solar panels. Don't forget. Thanks, Andrew. Morning, Sean. Derek Eves. Hey, Derek. Come on, buddy. All right, welcome back to the Iowa Deer Classic in Des Moines, Iowa. We're out, Larry Mack, Ryan, and I are here broadcasting live. Show is open up at 9, so we're the only one here. It's kind of nice. You can actually run around the show and see what's here before anybody else gets here. Randy, thanks, buddy. We appreciate you watching. Good morning, Jeff. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. So uh, a lot of stuff going on. All right, so here, if you come by the booth, we're at 9.05. Uh, we got a couple different deals. If you First off, if you buy an Elite... Omnia or an Era while you're here at Archery Field and Sports, you just bring the receipt over to me here at the booth and I want to put you in a drawing. I'm giving away a brand new Tacticam 6.0 camera uh, and I would say your odds are, you know, if there's 10 bows, 10 of those bows bought at the show. So you probably got a one, either a one in 10 or less odds of winning. Your odds are going to be really good for winning. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a good thing. I got to turn Larry's mic on. That wasn't by. That wasn't on purpose. Oh yeah, he turned me down. He's <laughs> he getting me back. <laughs> What'd you say, Larry? I, what? I just can't hear you, Larry. What? What do you say? <laughs> Paybacks are hell, aren't they? <laughs> right. Uh, anyways, uh, Mark's got some uh, show specials going on. If you buy a bow from him, uh, you know, tell him he'll. You know, there's only one bow as far as you know. Elite. You know, he should carry more elite. You should tell Mark Wagner that. <laughs> but uh, uh, you get a hundred dollar gift card. Uh, Mark's doing well. So the, come on down. They got great bow specials going on there. And then uh, we got a couple deals going on. If you come out to the booth and download the app, uh, you, and just uh, I'm going to show you how to register uh, to the website. We're going to put you in a drawing. I'm giving away two turkey packages from partners. We've got a DSD turkey decoy we're giving away, brand new. Uh, Tacticam camera, and we're giving away. I got the, I got the little folder right here. You get a Rupert's Roost in Peace turkey call, which is worth its weight in gold. And you're also going to get one of those new Tom Steaks from a live action decoys, uh, thanks to Wade and Teresa. And uh, their technology on decoys is awesome. And they use yep. DSDs too. Yep. No, they are. And they're, they're here. So if you come to the Classic, you need to stop by and say hi to Wade and Teresa for sure. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the other thing too is if you do have the app, Go up to the top left corner, the little hamburger icon, click it, go down and uh, fill your email, uh, put out your email if you haven't submitted for uh, any of those drawings as well. Yeah, because we're going to use that for stuff moving forward. Larry, you know, I, I want to say thank you, and I, I want to publicly announce that I did not know that that was called a hamburger, that little three. I always said hamburger that was the menu, the menu line, but yeah, I, I love it, the hamburger. The hamburger line. Yeah, the hamburger I'll never, icon. I, that's easy. I'll never forget hamburger. I love yep. hamburgers. Man. Well, obviously, I won't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to put a little yellow font in there so yep. we can say, go to the cheeseburger. There you go. Yep. Yeah, a little cheesy burger. So make them, yeah, yeah, make the, the middle line uh, cheese. Yeah, my little lockers here. Uh, I got. I saw them, gang. They got a whole bunch of snack sticks and Bjorki and stuff for you to, to buy from uh, right here in Iowa. So go check that out. Home, uh, home, go get that stuff going and uh anyway a lot of stuff going on so uh yep. it's crazy show opens today at uh, nine o'clock goes to 7 p.m and then tomorrow is uh, they got a military day going on tomorrow i believe john told me it was five dollars uh, if you're a vet or if you're in the military so uh 10 a.m to 4 p.m tomorrow so come on out to the deer classic we'd love to see you i, I gotta tell you larry mack uh kansas is gonna open up uh, you guys that's your opener too right for turkeys oh yeah as of right now yeah, yeah. so I, I i always look forward to triple h i uh it's it's the the hunting's phenomenal 
but it it's the it's the it's the Hules. Mm-hmm. It's it's Hilly, Connie, Donovan, it, it, Lori, everybody out there that makes that place so special. Oh, absolutely. The Triple H is a it's a one of a kind place. You know, you know it's uh, you once you get there and you can have that experience. Just over on camp, they've got a the nice lodge, and and you learn a lot. You come out of there. I mean, that's one thing. I every time I go out there, I learn something new from from Donovan and even the other hunters. And it's it's awesome to, be able to spend time with with other hunters in, a, in an atmosphere like like here it is at Triple H. And if Larry's there, you can learn how to learn to turkey hunt out of a layout blind. Um, well, I mean, we were still learning ourselves. We just had a little <laughs> lucky. <laughs> just got a little lucky. I tell you, it is a little. It is a little uh, nerve wracking, and I say that in a good way. When uh, you're when you're eyeball to eyeball with a tom, yeah, it's a little stressful. Uh, it is. I mean, they because <laughs> he was eyeball. Yeah. Go watch it on our uh, respect their, the game heads, YouTube page. Yeah, their heads are kind of they're like so ugly. They're pretty. Yeah, you know, especially when you're that close, it's like whoa. Uh, I can actually see what that turkey is looking at. Yeah, and when you get a when you get a mature gobbler giving you the feather. Yeah, <laughs> the middle feather. Yeah, it's not very nice. We had, we did have a few of them giving us the feathers as they were running the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I I when you <laughs> told me you were going to do that two years ago, I laughed at you. I said you're crazy. He did it. I don't know. How, you, both of you guys, Ryan shot two. Yeah. You got two last year. Yep. And let me right. turn your. Let me turn. Sorry, Ryan. I didn't mean. I like you, Ryan. Oh, I didn't mean yeah, to cut yeah, you off. Yeah. 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 Ryan's my my fantasy football pal. So <laughs> even though he beat me. But uh, yeah, you shot two. I didn't get any last year, and you got you got. I shot one. You shot one. Yeah. So it was a uh, yeah. That was an awesome awesome experience. I mean, yeah, being able to uh, hop behind the lens, film Ryan uh, there too, and I was telling him that hey. it's, uh, that it is it's nerve wracking. I mean, you just don't realize whenever you're sitting there, it brings a whole other element to to turkey hunting. It, it does. <laughs> I've never yeah, seen anybody does. in my life do that. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, running and gunning, you're up and close personal with yeah. them, but not with a bow. And I, I, to me, how you got drawn on those on those toms that close without them, I, I'm I, telling you, it's a, it is very the biggest thing. And I think Ryan, you can chime in here, but that I found is just being patient, 100%. being patient because you're you're going to you are going to want to draw and you're going to want to move. Uh, but just be patient, really calm yourself down to the point where you like, just focus on the bird, the bird itself and making sure it's turned the right way. So you're always moving at the, the right time. And I'll tell you, doing that one time will teach you a lot about some of the stuff you've done wrong in the past. And you may have been successful in the past, but to actually be able to experience, uh, turkeys out really doing what they do. Cause I mean, we, we let them sit around the decoys, get comfortable, and once they, once they do that, they get a fix on the decoy. Literally, I feel like you can get away with a lot more than what people get credit for, and we proved it just by, I mean, because we're sitting up, like sitting up like I am in this chair, right out in the open, and just watching the turkeys, like, I mean, inside of 10 yards, walking literally right by you, uh, and it's... Uh, yeah, it does like take a it, whole new level of patience. Yeah, but I mean, does. once you've done it, once you've done it and really, really sat there, you start to learn, um, you know, what you like. You said what you can get away with, but it, at first, when you first do it, your heart and your brain, everything is saying go, 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 mm-hmm. go, and you're, you want. I mean, I've ruined a couple of them. Yep. Yeah, I, I, it really it yeah. took me a long time to. Yeah, you know, that's hunting though. Yeah. You I can mean, watch our YouTube channel. Yeah. There's a there's well, a couple. Well, Chris, Chris says the footage is unbelievable, yeah. but and Chris goes that bird looks like it was 15 yards. Chris, those birds were five yards, if, yeah. if not closer. They weren't yeah. 15; they it were five. Uh, you, I thought Ryan was going to reach out and grab it. Yeah. It crossed my mind. Yeah, <laughs> it crossed my mind. But, you know, and and that's what I mean. Your mind just t- kind of takes over, and and the first couple times I was like, man, we just have to settle down because yeah. I mean we were we were so amped up, and I mean I I shot and missed a bird at. I think seven yards. Yeah, but when you missed that, you were shooting a decap, and I missed two. I missed two that morning, but we had 25, 30 mile an hour winds that when you missed. No, I missed one with a regular uh, broadhead. Oh, yeah, yeah, I really? Missed, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I knew we both two. missed that one yeah. morning. So that was that was another time I missed. <laughs> well, we all, I, it happens. It happens a lot. So that's all right. So, but no, I just that that totally blew my mind that you guys pulled that off. That it doesn't was, seem like it should work. 
no. I mean, the concept, even yeah. when you sit out there, like, this is not going to work. And then if you're patient enough. And you, and you called enough, those guys, you called those gobblers, You they were like a half a mile across the, the creek. They're yeah, and it was you so guys, windy. they were, they, and yeah. they should have been able to hear us, but it was so yeah. windy. It's western Kansas; it's windy all the yeah. time. They yeah. could not hear us, so we kept back and forth. I'd sneak up the railroad tracks to get close enough to where they could hear me, and they they'd gobble and then come back and gobble. And we ended up having to actually use the decoy. Yeah. We snuck through there all the way through the timber. We got eighty yards from them, yep. and Larry was hiding behind the strutter decoy, and, <laughs> I'm I, holding and the I was decoy. holding off to, to I was holding on to <laughs> his a- shirt. Yeah. And I was like, you don't move. I'm going to guide you back through the yeah, woods. Yeah, because I had to walk backwards. the whole time. Yeah. So we what literally what brought him back with a decoy calling, and Ryan's guiding what, the de- With a strutter fan, full yeah. fan. Yeah, yeah. The, I had the whole decoy. Yeah. yeah. Just like this. Yeah. And and then once they saw it, <laughs> Ryan's guiding me. I'm walking then backwards. it was a race to get back to and the blind. And then it was a race, yeah. Up. We got back, and I had to get set up in the blind, and Ryan had to go get behind the lens. And, and, uh, and I mean, as soon as we got set down, and they were here. They were, and and it worked out. So, one like of I said, the prettiest it, birds I think I, I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Good morning, Susan. Thanks for watching, kiddo. Cheyenne. Good morning. Uh, Cheyenne said, "Good morning, Ryan." Yep. You know Cheyenne? Dire, dire, yeah. 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 It's, it's, morning. See, I, nobody gets to hear Ryan a lot, so yeah. it's always nice to have the vo- you know the velvet voice of Ryan. Uh, the velvet Hooser. voice. I'm just a guy that sits behind the camera all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, not lately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he'll, he'll fling him. Well, Ryan, he'll fling him too, boy. Yeah, good morning, John. You know, Paul, uh, and I, I want to say something about Paul Biggs. Um, you guys but you guys do this a lot too, but you guys actually like going and building, like a na- using natural ground blinds yep. a lot. To You guys are, you're, you're strategizing and then going after them, and then you set up, a, you ain't got time to put a hub style blind up, so you, you're using, Paul, I think Paul, because Paul self-films a lot of that, mm-hmm. and I think Paul, I mean, he gets second angle shots, and I think Paul Biggs does an amazing job on that. Oh, absolutely. They're, you know, being able to pull it off on turkey without a blind, with a bow, you know, like like that, and self-film it, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a, a huge accomplishment. Yeah. You know, and, and Paul's done it several times, and he's uh, he's good at what he does, for sure. Morning, John. And Paul's a little real tree ninja. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I mean, Paul's. I mean, he pulls up. I even just watch him when we were out in Colorado elk hunting. I mean, Paul's Paul's crafty with that setup stuff, man. Yeah, I'll tell you the. I'll tell you a story about turkey hunting with uh, Paul. He he calls us one morning because the birds didn't. They weren't acting right. They stayed out. They just weren't responding. So he's like, you know, heck with it. I'm gonna go back to the truck. Goes. He's going back to the truck. Looks up at his truck, and there's two toms <laughs> pecking. His bumper, like, because they're <laughs> seeing, they see him. They see his, the yeah. reflection in there. And he's like, you ain't going to believe this, but them birds, they went right up by my truck. And they're up by my truck. And so he sneaks around and gets set up behind a cattle water trough. And he's just set up behind there, crawls, belly crawls, sticks a decoy out and calls. <laughs> and one of the birds uh, comes over and he ends up uh, getting arrow on him, decaps him, actually. Yeah, well, he was trying. Yeah. He was shooting the decaps and trying not to hit his bumper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was afraid That's of right. scratching it. He missed a couple times yeah. because he, he just could not yeah. get his truck out of the way. It ended up having to call him back away from his truck. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, and that was down in Oklahoma. And yeah, that's actually on YouTube, on our on our YouTube channel, yeah, too. That, if that you goes want to watch down it. one of the crazier yeah. hunt turkey hunts. Yeah, it is. It was pretty cool. Morning, Jeff. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. Jeff, or Chris DeMonsity watched that video five times. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> John Calhoun, good to see you, bud. Hey, it's uh, 738 and some change. I need to hit another quick break. We'll be right back on 1350 ESPN. Hey, guys. Jackie Bushman here with Buck Masters. When it comes to food plot seed and deer feed, the Mississippi... Hey, guys. Is Jackie Bushman on the side. Jackie you Bushman. Know, That's the man. Like You've met Jackie Bushman. Plumber Deluxe oh, and the popular Jackie. Dixie Six for their attractants like Game Changer, Sweet Stuff, and Buck Robert. The best way to put it is, if you're not using Backwoods Attraction products, you better hope your neighbor isn't either. From small to large acreage, Backwoods Attraction has the feed and seed perfect for your hunting property. Do yourself a favor and swing by and support your local... Morning, Chris. Good to see you, buddy. Morning, Chris. Hello, this is Dave from JLM Shooter Supply in Irvington. We are a full-service gun shop that specializes in helping you find the right firearm for your team. We carry new and used firearms for all shooting disciplines, from self-defense to shooting enthusiasts, as well as folks who like to hunt. We have recently expanded our store to better serve your needs. We still accept 
traits on all that's types a of That's a mom that uh, real looks like. Fire. That white one? Yeah. That Marion? Yeah. yeah. Your real looks like that? Yeah. Yeah. So Donovan said it's, they've only killed one other bird. Huh. That looked like that. Like I think it's a, is it a hybrid? It's the one that, no, it's a, it's a real. That's crazy. I was mic'd up and I was like, stay on the white one. <laughs> stay, on the, stay on the white one. There he is. Good morning, Hank. Good to see you. Tell everybody to Revelton high for me. Good yeah, morning, Hank. Uh, Cheyenne, we're going to start trying to do some tips and stuff. Cheyenne says, any chance of a video coming out with turkey calling tips and decoy setup? Yeah, for sure we can do. And any and too, for anybody that that would like to see, ask any of those tips or have questions uh, like that, uh, do exactly what Cheyenne just did and, and, you know, ask about it. It, it definitely helps us out, too, to keep content flow, stuff that you want to watch. And, and, and if you just have questions... To just send us a message either on social media, uh, email, uh, however, but uh, we'll make sure that we uh, we get them answered for you and try to help out where we can. Hey, Jerry. What's he say? <laughs> and Annalise just jumped out of out of bed. She heard your she heard you. Ha ha. Thanks, thanks, Jerry. <laughs> thanks, John. We know we got faces for radio. We appreciate that. Yeah. Roger Wild up in New York. How's it going, going buddy? Roger. Roger the Dodger. Yep. Got the New York boys watching this morning. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Supposed to be good weather today. Supposed to be nice. We got lucky this weekend. Yep. Last year, remember a tornado? Yeah. Year today. Yeah, I went through uh, down by Winterset. All down by Winterset. Yeah. Yeah. That, was amazing. that was a mess. What's up, buddy? At American Family Life Insurance, we know that protecting your family's financial future is a priority, and life insurance is an easy way to help make that happen. You'll feel good knowing you've taken steps to protect what matters most if you were to pass away. Plus, life insurance is often more affordable than you think. Let's talk about options that fit you. Contact Darren Islander. Andrew, can you hear me? 515-964-7575. American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway. Madison. Absolutely. Shane, we're uh, you know we're we're pumped up to be able to share some our experiences for sure, and not only that is to, to hear other people's experiences. All too. right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan. We are broadcasting live out at the Iowa Deer Classic. I got Larry McCoy, Ryan, and uh, all the gang will be here soon with Kurt and I. I've, I don't know if Dougie and Eric or them guys are coming. Uh, I know Kurt's supposed to be here from Working Class Bow Hunter, so we'll have them on at eight o'clock. Hey, uh, real quick, I need to tell everybody, Herman's Fine Jewelers, if you're looking for a great gift, uh, I would send you down there, 2900 University in West Des Moines. They've been helping Iowans for over 35 years. They're your one-stop jewelry shop. Uh, if you're looking for a custom option, I got an elk, my elk ivory made into a crosser. Did I ever show you that? 
You did show me that, yeah. and, I, and actually, I was, uh, I've got a couple of elk ivories. I was wanting to Brian, get some. Brian, did I show you with. that? Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty neat. That's uh yeah that that's my uh sorry Larry, that that's my uh the t what I got on the TV show two years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I got a cross me. Nice. Hermans can do some amazing things. They have I got a really nice elk ring too. So if you are looking for something kind of special for somebody in the outdoors, go go see them down there at twenty nine hundred University in West Des Moines. Also, if you got stuff laying around that you just don't wear anymore, hey, you need a new trolling motor? You want to buy that new uh, Elite Era Carbon Bow? Uh, or, you know, you need uh, slick trick broadheads or, you know, fishing line. I don't care. You know, don't worry about it. Take your stuff that you don't use anymore down to Herman's. They've been around so long. Chances are you're going to get more for your treasure at Herman's Fine Jeweler than you will anybody else. Best prices in town. Tell them Outdoors Dan sent you. All right. Uh, Andrew, we okay on, we got, uh, we all right on breaks. I, we had uh, just got one left, right? That's correct. Your last final short break after this. Bro. We got this. Well, one more, I should say, one more big break, and then your final bit. Okay, we got a five minutes on. All right, we're good. All right, so we're going to go to Kansas, and then uh, uh, um, I'm hoping I got invited to go to Knox County. Now, you guys have been in Knox County. That's Chris's mm -hmm. place in Missouri. You shot one of the biggest birds you ever shot there. Yeah, it was a um, – I was actually with Philip, Phil Vanderpool and, uh, Who's and that? Chris. Yeah. You know, do, do I know Philip? You probably recognize his voice. <laughs> yeah. uh but no it was a uh it's a special place as well not uh chris and sean nettie uh the the whole crew out there you know it's it's a it's a really cool camp as well and uh yeah but yeah i did i killed my big bird ever um out so, there well yeah, yeah when he sent me a picture of it i said okay i'll be there in four hours yeah. I, I, I jumped John, in the truck out there i gotta take pictures of this john yeah. said he's headed, headed down to knox county in october yeah, yeah, awesome. There you go, yep. John. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, that's a uh, Chris. You'll really enjoy uh, time spend time with Chris and and that whole crew. It's a it's a pretty special place as well. Yeah, I mean, you guys, uh, even your buck hunt. I, that's I can't believe that you guys. If you haven't watched, what was what what show was that last season? That was or was that two seasons ago? I think it's titled Knox Whitetails. It's on our YouTube page as well on uh, RTG Living and their shorts of it. They go hang a stand. No, you tell a story. I'll Actually, we uh, we went into the to a farm and we just kind of drove in. We were on our way out that afternoon. I was like, "Well, it was a warm day, so." And we had noticed that a big ball of dust off over in the distance, and and Alec, the guy that was hauling us around, and we were just kind of driving around looking. We uh, saw uh, saw the dust, so we were like, "Man, they're cutting some crops over there." He's like, well, we got a farm right over here. So I said, well, let's go take a look at it. So we drove in, looked, and there was an old two-man ladder stand whenever we went in. And we put up a, a camera and made a mock scrape, like right then. And uh, checked the stand, make sure it was obviously safe enough to get in, knowing that we were going to have to hang another stand for a uh, camera guy behind it. Well, so we hung the camera up. We left, went set that evening. Not a lot going on that afternoon, but... Right there in the evening, I mean, it wasn't an hour and a half after we put that mic scrape out, Ryan, mm -hmm. and we had a picture of, of a shooter buck right there in the scrape, and uh, so we go out the next day that evening, and it was standing beans in that field, <laughs> and then... It was. Yeah, so the camera sh shows a combine going by, they start cutting the field, and they were like, well, we'll just pick somewhere else to go. I was like, nope, we're going to go, we're going to go over there, we're going to hunt. Uh, that's what our plan was, we're going to stick to it. Chances are they're going to have that bean field cut. And uh, we go there, and we see the farmers and the combines and stuff out there, and we think, okay, yeah, they're done. Drive in, haul the decoy in there, get it set up. Ryan's hanging the stand. While Ryan's, while I'm putting the decoy up, climb up in the tree, and I'm on the ladder, and we hear, boom, combines fire up again. Right across the draw, not 40 yards, there's another bean field. And... Uh, they're, they're going to start cutting that one. So we're like, literally, pass. Uh, the combine makes a pass. I could literally wave at him, throw a rock, and, <laughs> and, and hit him. And, uh, and I looked down, and I'm like, Ryan, I saw a buck. He's well, like, and like, we were pretty yeah. relaxed. Yeah. Just, you know, with all that going on, you don't think, you know, you're not on edge. You're not really, you know, you don't feel like you're hunting on. You're just kind of just chilling out. Um, I'll be and, right back. And, and sure enough, I mean, he tasked me. 
Uh, you didn't even have an arrow knocked yet. No, I didn't even have we an were, arrow knocked. We yeah, we were pretty much just sitting in the tree just to see what happened. I mean, and you, I just feel this tap on my shoulder. <laughs> hey, right here, and sure enough, I mean, I was like, man, it, it is. It. I said, I'm pretty sure it was that deer. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And he just disappeared. And meanwhile, this combine's just making passes. Right, I mean, right yeah. by us. And I'm like, and this deer is like right below the combine in this draw. And we're like. It was, you know, like late October. Not yeah. late, late, but it was it was late October. And I mean, he was he was on that. He would not let that doe yeah. go. We didn't see the doe. He on, just but... disappeared. Yeah. And so at the time. And then. Ryan's really glassing, looking, looking, trying to find him, and, and the combine's just going by, just spitting beams out, you know, all yep. the, yep. I mean, dust flying everywhere. And all of a sudden, Ryan's like, right behind us, right behind us, coming right behind us. And here comes a doe, and then a little buck. I'm like, surely that ain't the deer I saw. Yeah, well, <laughs> he ran her right yeah. underneath the ladder. Yeah, like, yeah, and just chased her right underneath the ladder. And then Ryan's tapping me, he's like, no, to our right, to our right, and... There he was. He come, uh, I mean, he come in hot and then come out to the edge, saw the decoy, laid his ears back, and caught a torch behind the shoulder. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was an awesome hunt. Fast and furious, but man, sometimes that's how it happens. That I was like, actually the prototype with the torch. That was the first deer you. It was, yeah, yeah. Was the main boys there, man. Yeah, it was. I had to apologize too uh, whenever, uh, whenever we walked up on it because it was a uh, mess. Yeah, it was a mess. Yeah. Yeah, I had to go let our next guest in, folks. I appreciate you guys manning the show while I was gone. <laughs> yeah. You guys are seasoned professionals. And, and by the way, that was probably the best. The best, of, the best, best 25 <laughs> year segment ever on the Outdoor Call or Outdoors no, no, Radio. Do, yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. All right, it is 7.51 and some change. Let me take my last. Oh, Michaela McCoy. Hey, here's my daughter. That's yeah. a nice young lady yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, my Michaela. daughter, yeah. Hey, babe. <laughs> Hey, what's Chris say? He's Phillips a short fella. <laughs> <laughs> he said that Phillips a short fella. Yeah, yeah. Philip Vanderpool, in my humble opinion, is one of the best bow hunters I've ever met. In my well, life. That's a fact. Yeah. Um, oh, Philip, he's, I've learned a lot from Mr. Vanderpool. Yeah, I uh, I've known Philip a long time too, and he's uh, he's good people. All right, we're gonna take our last big break, and uh, so no flippy floppy. We'll be right back live at the Iowa Deer Classic. Uh, working class bow hunters in the house. They'll be up right after uh, the 8 o'clock hour, so hang on. We'll be right back. If bow hunting or archery is your passion, get to Archery Field and Sports Thank in you. Altoona and see what you do in your sport. <laughs> he couldn't archery get in. <laughs> yeah, I had to go let him in. They had people outside. They wouldn't let him in. Really? I don't understand that. I've got a boot. <laughs> Kurt, why, would, like, Kurt, like, why, wouldn't, got, they, why wouldn't they let you in? Well, I understand yeah. that. Now. You said it was the neck tattoo. The neck tattoo. Come <laughs> yeah. say hi, everybody, on Facebook Live. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, guys? Yeah. Yep. So Mr. Kurt. Fancy, man. Yeah, buddy. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? Thanks for having us do this. How about how about fun? You guys have a good time last night? Oh, it's always fun. Yeah. Devin drug us out all night. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't keep up with this guy. I don't like to, yeah. keep, I don't like to bring him out of Utah for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he is, Chris. Philip Vanderpool is a good dude. I ride. I give him a lot of trouble, but Philip's in Florida. I think Philip Turkey's he's somewhere south. Philip's in Florida. I figures he's somewhere. I know he said he was headed south, so I imagine there's turkeys gobbling somewhere down there. <laughs> he's like, boy, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you. Like, hey, them birds are gobbling down there. I know they are. I know. I feel it. I can feel it. All the way down to my roots. <laughs> down to my plums. I can feel them. I can feel them go. <laughs> I, I don't know anybody. We're not on the we're not on the air. We're just live on Facebook. I'll just tell you guys on Facebook real quick. And I I I've never i I've never seen anybody when Philip is isolated on a big deer. I've never seen anybody as dedicated to harvesting that deer as Philip. I Philip, well, how cold was it? Philip Philip shot one of the biggest deer he ever shot in his life. He slept in a blind. It was what fifteen degrees there. Oh, it was cold. It was cold, and uh, we had one of them. Uh, 
<laughs> body seat. What was it? Things called body bags, yeah. or yeah, like a, yeah, like, like a like a sleeping a bag, but it, a heat heater body suit. Yeah. Philip slept in the blind with that because he couldn't get into it. the deer. The deer was patterning what he was doing, and he stayed in the blind all night and froze it and froze, and then he shot the deer the next morning. He, so I'll tell you a story too. That <laughs> night, I was like, "You're gonna do what?" He's like, "Yeah." He goes, "Man." I mean, because he killed him the last day of season. Yeah. And he calls me, he calls me from the blind that night, and he's like, "Hey, Larry Mac." He goes, "Hey, I'm telling you, this is intense." I said, "Are you?" Uh, because I'm sitting in the dark. I said, well, yeah, I figured you probably were. I was like, I was like, I was like, and he's like, uh, he goes, dude, I don't know what it is, but you can hear everything. Everything. I was like, he said, the woods come alive. <laughs> you can hear everything. He said, he goes, I look out, I look out there, all I can see is silhouettes. He's like, a deer walking around and. You know, you got coons, possums. He said, things brushing up against the side of the blind. He goes, I go, did you sleep? He goes, hell no, I didn't sleep. <laughs> he goes, hell no, I didn't sleep. Well, yeah. And then I'll be darned if, uh, yeah, the next he day. He him. Yep, the yeah. next day, the deer. He stayed in there half that first day, then waited in the next evening. Uh, he ended up, that deer ended up showing up, and he ended up killing him. So. Yeah. He's, he's shot some hammers over the years, too. Yeah. Oh, old Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Body heater. Heater body. Uh, heater body suit. It was uh, the game no hide. chill. The no chill. No suit. chill. Yeah. Game hide. Yeah. yeah. Game hill's not. Yeah. Game hide. Uh, game hide. <laughs> game hill. Game hill. Yes. <laughs> game hill. I'll say King Hill. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think we've ever had Ryan on the radio show. That's like a first. Yeah. Yeah. I got him to do a podcast one time, and it's like pulling teeth to get him to talk. <laughs> Sometimes he's, he's got a lot of knowledge between the mirrors. Stewie! Good morning, Stewie. Oh, there's Stewie. Hey. Morning from Cheer Camp in Kansas City. Yeah. Ra ra re, kick him in the knee. We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? Go, Stewie. Morning, Dirk. Hey, Dirk. That's a fine feller, Mr. Dirk. Dirk. Yep. yep. Show him the yeah. Morning, John. Morning, John. That's actually Jed. You know that, right? From Kansas. Hey, Jed. That's Jed. Yeah. yeah. I can see. I can see the yellow thumbs up. But yeah. Until you get down here from my angle here. Yeah. Morning, Jed. All right. Welcome back. We are live at the Iowa Deer Classic. Doors open up at nine o'clock today, nine to seven. Uh, we are here. We got a bunch of stuff for you to do at the at the booth. Nine o five. Come out and see the hammer. Uh, hey, what's the deer? Lewis? Is the deer's name yep. Lewis? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest non-typical deer you'll ever see. Just a beautiful deer. We got him here. Josh uh, will be here shortly after, sh shortly after one. Sure. No, oh, he'll be here right about between 9.30 and 10 probably. So come on out and say hi. I know he'd love to visit with you. And uh, just a lot of fun. Working class bow hunter guys are up here in a minute. And they got some guys uh, or a whole bunch of... Uh, Shirts and oh hey, first person that comes up and tells me Doug is a mustache machine. Doug Ooh. is a mustache machine. I'm a booth 905. First person that comes up here, I have got a special treat for you from working class bow hunters. Doug is a mustache machine, and uh, we're going to give you something special, uh, courtesy of working class bow hunters. So well, thanks. Kurt, we get, well, I'll first two people. Kurt just went and grabbed another one, so there you go. All right, uh, so anyway, Larry Mack and Ryan will be here all day. Come out. I know they'd love to see you. And uh, if you got questions about some of the new product from the outdoor group, uh, it's a great time to get in here. And, hey, if you're a Scott Archery, uh, Scott Release fan, get out here because you're, they're going to be able to tell you about some of these new stuff coming out uh, that's 
will blow your mind if you like to shoot scout releases. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so anyway. All right, we got to run. We'll be right back. Keep it here on 1350 ESPN. Yeah, Doug is a mustache machine. I was I was really bummed out that we couldn't do day for Doug. He's kind of going through it, you know? Yeah, he told me. I, I, but I look forward to that. We, did you hear about that? I uh, did. We were all there doing the podcast, and I had two beers, so I was drunk. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. No, I had that chocolate thing. Oh, you did. You were drinking yingling. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, we were saying if Doug was single... We were going to get all the uh, have the invite the young ladies to come out to have a, a thirty second. Uh, what do you call that, Kurt? What were we calling? Blind date. Uh, bl yeah, like a thirty second blind date with Doug at the classic. Okay. And, and then he was going to. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I mean everybody was fired up for it, but it didn't happen. I was kind of that would have been a radio Doug that would have been radio magic, man. Yeah, that would have. Yeah. Doug wasn't feeling it, huh? Uh, Where's backboard? Okay. Is Larry coming out to hunt with us? Yeah, well, Larry's yeah, Larry hunts Iowa with me, Dirk, and then we we'll be at Triple H together. Yep. <laughs> Doug's a mustache machine. Yeah, Roger, I can't mail that to New York. <laughs> Come on, man, it's gotta be here. That's not fair. If I hey, if I, if I was in control, Roger, I'd I'd hook you up. <laughs> Raj, I'll see if I can get one from Kurt to bring to. If you're going to be a Triple H this year, let me know and I'll try to throw one in the truck for you. Yeah. I'm not spending a hundred dollars to ship something the size of a of a snuff can. I think can. you ought to. I really think you ought to. Come on, to. Roger. I mean, dude, Roger, I would stay on him about it if I were you. Don't don't give up. Oh, at Hell's Canyon, Bo? Are we, <laughs> Dirk, I didn't know we were hunting at Hell's Canyon. Are we hunting at Hell's Canyon? At Dirk's? Dirk, Not you well? weren't supposed to say anything. Well, he just asked me if I was coming to hunt. I know, but what? he wasn't supposed to say anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Larry! <laughs> I'm all right. That's, that's awesome, man. I'll be there. All right, Roger. <laughs> uh, 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 heck, yeah. Yeah, Dirk's got a great outfit. For sure, that's uh, yeah, we're, we're that's exciting. That, that's exciting stuff for sure. Always, always great to be able to go kind of out west, step outside the box, and be able to do some of that stuff out west too. And Dirk's a great resource for that. Man, they they've been getting some nice game. I mean, he's got great. Uh, go look, uh, go look up uh, Dirk Dirk Stark or Hell's Canyon bow hunting yep. on uh, Facebook. They got some amazing posts. All right, Kurt, you want to, who's going first? I'll go first. All, All right. right. I thought we were both, we were both yep. Yep. Next two. Here. Two or one. Here you go. You got Stan. Yeah. Kurt, you all talking. Yeah, I, yeah. I just wanted Devin and get him a taste of the Midwest. Well, come on, Deb. Get in here, buddy. Here we are. I'm going to lean in on this guy. What do you need me to do? Uh, you can't. Well, you guys just, you got two mics. You can get as comfy as you want. Cool. All right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. Hope everyone's having a great Saturday. Thank you so much for making us part of your weekend. We always appreciate you. We are live at the Iowa Deer Classic booth 905, just right down the row from Working Class Bow Hunters. I got Mr. Kurt and Devin. Dev, really nice to meet you, yeah, man. You really, as well. I got. Well, I saw man. you a little bit yesterday, but it was nuts. So yeah, it's crazy. And I heard today's going to be even crazier. It'll well, be shoulder yeah. to shoulder today. Well, I had to bring. So Devin's from Utah. He's like the mule deer guy, and we've done a lot of hunts together. So I'm like, all right, you got to come out, experience the Iowa Deer Classic, and kind of just see what it's about. So he owns a company in the outdoor industry. So he's you're scouting kind of yeah, so, yeah. for talent. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> so <laughs> haven't, I haven't seen you since uh, since I came out to the studio. Yeah. That was fun. You got to get back up there with Larry. I, you know now. what? I want to do it, but I want to do it with Larry because he, yeah. he's it's it's a riot when he's there. You know, I, I, I'm, well, I'm 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 I'm. It's more fun when he's not. I'm ten talk minutes. About him. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. We were actually talking pretty good smack about him. So, yeah. But uh, I, I just like laughing, Larry. Ten minutes. I mean, everybody. They already know everything I, I've talked about. They, I, it's no big deal if I'm there, but. Having Mac there is a lot. Or Ryan would be a Give yourself some credit. Yeah, you gotta 
Man, you're I a got, legend. Uh, hey, I, yeah, I'm a legend. <laughs> Buffets fear me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> At this point. I'm, I'm solely responsible for putting Golden Corral out of business in Iowa. So. <laughs> Keeping them in business. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're, they're gone. just shutting down early. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. See, Larry shows up. The deer, the, all these, you see flags and stuff because they know yeah. the, the killings get I ready see, to they start. They see flags, all right. Yeah, they see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, sh- I show up at a buffet. The fantail shrimp start leaving. So yeah, it's good. Man, I'm proud of you. You guys have just been growing, and uh, you've Thanks. been doing an amazing job. You got you're branching out into other things. Yep. Um, I'm. I, I first of all, uh, thank you for helping us launch the Outdoor Call Radio app last year. Yeah, uh, thanks for letting us be a part of it. Man. Oh, it's it, we're we're an honor to have you. Nine thirty Friday nights. Uh, if you want to hear some uh, some some uh, rockulich vernacular, uh, you can you can. <laughs> you, it's extreme. Yeah. It's extreme vernacular. I heard that word. Yeah, I, I made it up. That's an outdoors <laughs> like Danism, rockulich. Yeah. So that means they that means they they kind of they're um, they they kind of expand into the uh, salty language once in a while. Once just, in a while, it's just what, how people talk, Dan. You know what? I'm old, man. I mean, come on. It's just it, I, 25 listen, years of clean we're language. We're conditioned for radio. I, I know you. It's a different. You're an old road dog. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm old. That's just the way it is. They ruined my 25 year streak on on oh, the podcast. That's Actually, a big got deal. me to cuss on the on the podcast. That's a big deal for me. Yeah, I know. You're really <laughs> proud of that. I, I knew I knew you you had the run. I'm like, all right, you're gonna yeah. come into the working class boner studio. Yeah, he's you know up. podcast of the year. He's got. You should see their frame wall at the studio. Podcast of the year. All these other awards, and <laughs> then there's one, a big maple. One year. <laughs> then, then there's a maple plaque that says, "We got the old old guzzard to, to cuss on the radio." <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just a picture of your face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't bad, but I did it was, anyway. It's a very you, minor cuss. Yeah, <laughs> very minor. <laughs> it's barely. A cuss. Yeah, I was in a service, and they used to make fun of me because I didn't cuss. Really, even back then, you did. Even now, I respect that. You're going to yeah. meet Jacob from our uh, Victory Drive podcast. Uh, Jacob's actually going to be on the show uh, here in a couple weeks, and and I was going to thank you. We you gave us Victory uh, Victory Drive Pod. Yep. Uh, great show. Yeah. Uh, and and he's a war hero. He's an American yeah. treasure. Yeah, he really is. And when you talk yeah. to him, you feel it when you talk to him. He's got like a. Big, he's big. His personality's big. Yeah. He's charismatic, but you don't want to mess with him. No, <laughs> at the same no. time, he's yeah. somebody you'd want to have for backup. We call him WCB Security for yeah. that reason. So I believe that. At the I... booth, I'm like, hey, can you kind of just get people moved out of the way? He just kind of like walks over, and everyone's like, all right, man, I'm leaving. <laughs> well, you guys have been. You keep doing what you're doing because you. you you set an industry standard, and I, I, well, I've been, I've honestly, I've enjoyed watching you grow. Well, that means. And a lot then of you that. got a new project coming out. We aren't. We're not going to say anything about it now. But this next thing he told me about. Is going to blow your mind. Hopefully, yeah. That that is going to be. I I will look forward to listening to that one. That's going to be fun. Well, I hope it does well. Yeah, it will. You're doing <laughs> we'll good. See. It'll be so, fun. how do you like the Midwest? Yeah, I love it. Do you? Totally different from you know, Utah, but yeah, it's cool out here. Man, you're, you, guy you, you, you're in a different level. I mean, you go out there, you got everything. Yeah. I mean, and it. I mean, I don't. Do me a favor. I don't. You know. I, the elk and the moose right. and, and all the other critters, but when you start seeing squatches, yeah. I, I want you to no, call I me. Told you. I, I told want you to you. call me because that's a mess up for squatches, man. I, doing this new squatchy show. I think we're losing listeners right now. No, <laughs> oh, I'm, hey, I'm Dan, telling you. I got to fill you in. So I've shared a lot of hunting camps with Devin. Yeah. And I brought up Bigfoot one time and he just shut me down yeah. so fast. I'm like, it's just a hope and a dream, man. And I'll, I'll get hey, it you know what? I don't know. I just like to see it if it's there. You know, I, me too. It's and fun I'm, to believe it. There's no way. There's no yeah. way Kurt, Kurt, Kurt goes up to <laughs> yesterday. He goes, "We're losing you, aren't we? You're, well, you're you're getting out of the hunting and going to this other." I go, "No, I'm you were so bu- passionate about it. I'm like, we gotta keep an eye on this guy. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here's the He's thing. Slipping. I when I grew up, that's you know, in the '70s. You know, the in search of with Leonard Nimoy. I mean, that stuff was all over. It was, yeah. you know, I loved. I grew up on that stuff. You yeah, know, yeah. I loved it. I want to. And you it. cannot turn TV on right now without seeing something about par- ghosts, Bigfoot, or anything else. Can <laughs> UFOs you? now, right? UFOs. Yeah. I mean, it's all that, over. That, that's. Uh-huh. I'm with you, Dan. I want it to be all real. Yeah. I really do. UFOs for sure. I will be a bow hunter till the day I die. That's my. That is my number one true passion. But it doesn't hurt to go squatch once in a while. Hey. Okay, they're enough. still looking. Yeah, they has got to keep them TV shows around, man. Speaking of squats, Steve Scuba is right there. Scooby, <laughs> what's up, buddy? He's now, so, uh, what's your what's your favorite thing to go after out there in Utah? Um, elk are fun, but I just love mule deer, and I don't know why. It's just like blondes versus brunettes, you know. Yeah. 
I'm in love with mule deer. I like that. So he, Dan, he is like the mule deer guy. Like, I don't know. I'm, I always brag on you because my buddy. Yeah, thanks. Four muleys over 210. Yep. Three over 220. Yep. Yeah. Which is insane. So we shared hunting camps out west together. He helped me, you know, fill some of my first tags for mule deer and bear and all sorts of and coos deer just recently. He came out uh, two falls ago to Illinois. First. Two, two hours, hours kills yeah. his first whitetail. <laughs> That's awesome. So he's just awesome. bit by the bug. A little yeah. Larry McCoy luck. So now yeah. every November yeah. is where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. Awesome. West. So. What about you? Now you guys got moose too, don't you? Yeah, yeah. That's got to be nuts sitting out there and have a moose stroll by. Oh, yeah, and they're just so big. Yeah. Yeah. Can you draw a tag out there for them? You can, you can, but they're once in a lifetime and that, super hard. Is that the mm-hmm. serious? Yeah. What, what moose is that? Cyrus. 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 Okay, yeah. sorry. I'm an idiot. You know that. Hey, um, Sasquatch is out there, too. Man. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I just... Like, is I, it the Miley Cyrus? <laughs> Miley Cyrus. <laughs> hey, I'm just, they come in like a wrecking ball? It's a subspecies. <laughs> hey, I'm stealing that. Miley Cyrus moose. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I love it. I love I love it. it. That's what I love about Cyrus. McCoy, man. He's always there to help. <laughs> Good thing so, that, right? <laughs> somebody just won a truck. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. So, um, <laughs> no, I think that's amazing. Uh, I love watching Kurt's posts when he was out there doing the stuff. Yeah. And I, I mean, you got beautiful. You do a great thing out there. Beautiful country. It's interesting because, like, you know, a lot of guys from the Midwest are all like excited about the elk, the moose. Mm-hmm. Now, but, but since I've lived out there for my whole life, yeah, now coming right. here and seeing white tail, that's what gets me excited. Yeah. But you know, you know, I, I, I mean, growing up and I grew up in Missouri and I moved up to Iowa 22 years ago. So I, I mean, I've seen, some, and I hunted, I've hunted Kansas for 17, 18 years. So yeah. I've seen some quality deer, but when you go out West, it's a totally different it mindset. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not hunting in the Midwest. Right. You know, and when people, when you book a hunt, if you've never done a Western hunt, you, you be, you're going to have to learn different strategies you're gonna yeah. i mean because it's not like hunting back here yeah. you're gonna want to fill your tag really bad to be successful right you know but. and i mean you guys are going in coolies and switchbacks and i mean you're glassing i mean it's a different it's just a different strategy yeah for sure yeah how did you get into that um you know what as a kid i always wanted to be a mountain man so since i really couldn't make a living being a mountain man the next best thing was just to go out there and hunt well you got the hair for it man. yeah <laughs> yeah it's a yeah. pretty man. Yeah, it's Jeez a pretty almighty. man. Did you just say a pretty man? <laughs> All, right. Yeah. All right, hey, we're back with <laughs> Kurt and his boy toy. Uh, <laughs> oh, my boy toy. <laughs> he's mine. Yeah, he's hey, mine. hey, that's a, I, I understand that. I mean, I, Donovan's my boy. You know, you I mean, I've shot some of my biggest deer with Donovan. And yeah, yeah. You know, you, you develop that relationship with us. When somebody helps you be successful... That's a bond. Yeah. And you, sure. you know what's funny about it, too? Devin and I met over the phone. He had a marketing company in the outdoors <laughs> and called me, basically scouted me through the podcast. podcast yeah. And I didn't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Are like, you stalking me, so, dude? So I, I kind of shut him down. And then we shared hunting camp like that next spring pretty yeah. much and then hit it off. And I don't know. We shared five hunt camps together now in the last few years, really. So how, how is the mule? Uh, how's the mule deer and the, and the whitetail? Uh, how are they doing out there? Mule deer? The, the herd. How's the herd? I think overall, mule deer are just slowly trending downward. Are they? Yeah. Is it CWD think, or what? What is it? I, I think like especially for this year, we've gotten so much snow that there's going to be winter I, mortality. Yeah. Yep. So they're saying that's a big deal, and I think just because there's so many hunters, but um, they're not as hardy as a whitetail, though. From yeah. what I understand, you know, I don't know, I guess, but I don't know if you see that. And I don't know, if, and there's just so much public because most of it's all public, you know. Yeah. So there's. But out here, you got private, so you can actually kind of manage your own right. farm at that. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, that's as wide as the screen goes. You guys seen me enough. You, that's why I put it on them. Tired of looking at me yeah. In the you got to you got to get this bromance here. Right here <laughs> yeah, right you, I want to share the love. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what about bears? We got bears. Dude, nope. I love bear hunting. That's yeah. coming up. Yeah. Down, so it's, uh, grizzly, or is it brown? Uh, mostly black bear. Can, yeah. It's all Do you black have grizzly? Bear. So Wyoming does, and what the the state of Wyoming opened up the grizzly hunt. Yeah. But then I think I believe the feds came in oh, and that. tried suing them. So then they had to close it down, and so now it's like a debate between the Wyoming Fish and Game trying to get the the grizzly bear hunt back in, and then the feds trying to stop. Is that it. this year? They're they're I trying. Know it happened to get, a couple years ago. Yep. And yeah. now they're and now Wyoming wants it back in just because there's so many grizzlies out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you have you encountered them when you've been out? I've never, I've seen one off the distance and then we were riding horses up the trail and then one like kind of backtracked us because yeah. we had to go back to the trailer because we forgot something I can't remember. But on the way back down to the trailer, 
there was a grizzly, fresh grizzly track. So that was probably the closest I've come. Our buddy Trey deals with them like on a weekly basis, and it's they're a problem out there in Wyoming. Well, I know the wolves are an issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we've talked about that quite a bit. You know, but you know, grizzlies. I tell you what, when I went to Alberta moose hunting last year, and uh, I, I mean that that's a different deal too but i mean you get out there and i was sitting by myself because i my buddy stewie was with the guy that i said you guys go and kill a moose yeah because i i'm trying to get it on for the tv show so i was sitting but i'm sitting there and then you start hearing that crunch 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 mm -hmm. and i'm hearing brush popping mm -hmm. well there's only a couple things <laughs> that does that it's either an elk or a moose or a bear right. and i i big yeah, our big, hey that would have been awesome man. <laughs> that would have been awesome it would have been but, better than but a moose I, i'm sitting i'm going what, man I'm, a, I'm an idiot i'm out here with my bow and a knife uh -huh. you know and a grit you know i've been around i've shot nine black bears over the years so I, i've been around enough bears i've had yeah. bluff charges and stuff grizzly is a totally different bear I mean, that, I mean, oh, they will yeah. eat you. Yeah. It's a man eater. Yeah, it's a it's a living boogeyman, pretty much. So, are you are you allowed to carry a, a sidearm when you're yeah. out? Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, Bertie Bertie. Trey that lives out in Wyoming, he's he's yeah. a full time outfitter. Mm -hmm. Last year, they were up elk hunting where like all the grizzlies are. Like you yeah. don't go up there. Yeah. Well, he went down to go pick up the elk that they just shot. His wife was still at the horses. His wife had to shoot the grizzly. At like probably 10, 15 yards because the grizzly was going to attack her and the horses. And the horses. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's not good. Um, <laughs> what do you guys carry for, for a, a revolver? You know, I'm not really a big well, gun guy. Let me tell you this. Devin doesn't carry. I don't American. carry. Okay. I probably should. Well, no, I'm just. Uh, I, I <laughs> no, mean, I should. I know. I know. Uh, Ruger's yeah. got the uh, Alaskan. That mm -hmm. 44. Yeah. 44. It's 44. Uh, and then uh, Smith and Wesson, but I, I'm actually going to buy a revolver um, because if I go out west, I want to carry one. Yeah. This is when me and Devin and Clint hunt together. We'll have like when we went on the mule deer hunt, mm -hmm. which we were like we're we're coming into grizzly country. We're yeah. like right on the cusp. We all, me and Clint had sidearms, and they ended up just going into the tent because we're like we don't want to carry them. But then you really wish you had it when if you need you, it, you yeah, know. So well, I mean, there's still to it around. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I shot my first muley uh, two years ago uh, out in uh, Montana. Okay, cool. And uh, you know, I, and it was it was a great buck for me. Just velvet. I got him in velvet. He came up over that little uh, little little knoll, and all. I mean, I just saw antlers. Uh -huh. It yeah. was it was so cool. Where but, in I mean, Montana? Uh, Alzada. Okay. In that south uh, southeast corner. Uh -huh. It's right there by uh, Ra uh, Rapids and Belfouche in South Dakota. Yep. It's yep. right in. Uh, 25 minute drive to Devil's Tower. Okay. In yeah. Hewlett. Yep. I mean, in yeah. Wyoming. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just a great spot. But, I mean, you guys you guys are shooting some giant muleys. Yeah. That's, I just can't even imagine how I'd be shaking if I saw that. That's <laughs> That's got to be a rush. <laughs> you guys, Devin shoots giant muleys. Hey. <laughs> it's all, it's all, killed, it's all good. Devin helped me film my first archery mule deer tag, but I killed a good one. Hey, you're on a roll, man. You got an, you guys an elk. Yeah. You got your, you got a big muley. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's been a great last few years. Man. You went to Africa. I yep. mean, you, you're you're smoking. You're almost at McCoy status. Uh, close. He just took me to Mexico. He made a bet with me. I don't know if you heard about the bet. Oh, I didn't hear about this. What was that? Devin has a company called Hunter's Box Club, and we were running promo on the podcast. Yeah, and we sell a hundred boxes in a couple of days. Yeah, you're like, I'll make you a deal because he he always tries to get me to go to Mexico to hunt coos deer and mule deer. <laughs> yeah. He goes, if you sell a hundred more boxes, I'll pay for your hunt. And I'm like. All right. Oh, that was bad. So and we <laughs> sold like three, three four hundred more boxes, yeah. Yeah. and I'm like, I'm going to Mexico, and then, uh, yeah. I think he almost about backed out, but well, it's just not a hunt that's high on the radar, you know. It, it is, but it's not. Where'd you? Where'd you coos deer hunting? Or yeah, coos, coos deer. deer? Yeah. Yep. I haven't got. That's one I haven't got. I want to get a black tail on a coos. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. think that that would be a really cool. They're not. They're not huge deer, but I mean, no. it's just they're beautiful deer. Yeah, they're really cool, man. Yeah. And, my wife will be here today at the show, and she hasn't seen Devin since I went on that hunt. Yeah. And he's going to get an earful. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> he may or may not have. You didn't get us into trouble. My wife thought he got us into trouble. So yeah. that's going to be a fun day at the show. All right. So <laughs> you got you got a whole plethora of uh, WCB uh, merchandise. Yep. People, I love the squirrel shirt. Thank yeah. you. I got one of these. Yep. Um, don't forget, first two people that came come up to me when the doors open and say, Doug has a magnificent... Doug is the mustache machine. Is that what I said? Just what? what they just come up and be like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, with that yeah just say, Doug, <laughs> "Doug is the Doug is the mustache machine." I got some. Uh, I got some special uh, stuff for you. So come on down. Uh, we and they they told me about this last year. I thought it was awesome. 
Yeah, it was in the product development stages at that point. Doug had to really get some months of test and uh, experimental. Yep. Hey, research. and if anybody has a Dale Earnhardt racing suit or a racing jumpsuit, bring it up here. Doug will make you an offer for it because he <laughs> you know looks. He's got he, one. That, well, no, he tell you, he does. He does. I and thought he I, said he was I, looking for. I tell him every show he has to wear. Yeah, because he looks like Dale. Looks like Dale. It's it's real. His, he's got the full leather deal yeah. with all the. Sponsors. He puts those aviators on. You swear, man, the intimidators in the house. It's close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm so. Anyway, well, listen, man. I I just uh, thanks for everything. Uh, if someone wants to book a hunt, if they want a great adventure out there, how can they get a hold of you? God, almost get a hold of Kurt. The okay. Working class. Yeah. Are you then, are you booking now? Are you an agent now? Is this I, a new uh, hey, new revenue stream right here hey, announcing on the never show? Never counted out. I need yeah, working class bow hunters <laughs> adventures. <laughs> adventures. Hey, that is go. a thing actually that we do have on our website. You do? Yeah, that's See, actually what it's called. I had too. No idea. WCB Adventures. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing. Yeah, and the chocolate milk's coming out soon too. I can't wait for that. What? Yeah, WCB chocolate milk, okay. man. <laughs> yeah, that coming too. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. It's like Last Nesquik with better. <laughs> WCB. Yeah. WCB. Sasquatch I'll hunt. take you out and hit a tree with a bat and see what we can figure out. You know what? I'm telling you what, buddy. I'm telling you. You just wait. You're slipping, man. Yeah, I. You just wait. I love how passionate you are about the unknown. No, you know what? I just love the story. I just love. I hear you. And you know what? It's I've been fun. talking about hunting and fishing for 25 years. It's when you get to talk about something <laughs> new that's fun. Yeah. I mean, you, nobody nobody knows. Yeah. No, nobody. nobody. Uh, hey, here. look at this. UFOs. Everybody, you know, everybody said UFOs, you know, the government was saying it's all BS and stuff. <laughs> what happened two years ago? They released all that Navy footage, the fighters. They can't catch up to them. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Come on. Come on, man. You're not going to convince them. Hey, and, on hey I got somebody. Breaking news here. I got somebody uh, coming in from... They're going to tell us what uh, they shot down on those weather balloons. I got somebody coming on the show in a couple months. Joe Biden's coming. Yeah. In. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling And hey, <laughs> I know, you know, thing. you know, how, <laughs> you know how I know Bigfoot's, yeah. uh, Bigfoot's got the possibility of being really real. Okay, possibility. Yeah, okay. here it is. Okay. Yeah, this is how I know this. The government denies their existence. You know why? They know it. They're real, but there's, they're, they're denying it because they don't want to give up the logging and the, uh, the tourism dollars. Because if they do find out Bigfoot's real, they're going to have to do protected species conservation, and all those this. thousands of timbers <laughs> are going to be it's what it's a spotted a, owl all over again. I'm telling you. I'm just that. telling you. I, uh, that is my theory, man. Devin's not convinced yeah. at all. Well, you know what. You, <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm in between. Yeah. I hope it's real. <laughs> I had somebody ask me the other day about uh, uh, about uh, well, why aren't they getting trail cams? Well, there are trail cam pictures of them now. Probably ninety percent of them are BS or yeah. somebody. I mean, in the a only person suit. who's got one's yeah. Fred Eichler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we see well, that. Video. They're in ghillie suits or they're in a. But here's the thing: white-tailed deer can detect EMF. Uh, turkeys can see EMF. You know what EMF is, right? I don't. The electric magnetic field that you, okay. your body generates. Okay. Animals can see that. That's that's a so that's, that's a why proof. we don't have pictures of. Well, people. now wait a minute. Okay. That's why hex suits came out. Okay. Hex suits are real, right? No. You know what a hex suit is, I don't. right? You don't know what a hex suit <laughs> no, is. I don't. Hex suits are they're uh, they're a suit hunt. They're they're one of the uh, larger in, uh, hunting suits in the in the industry. Like a ghillie suit? No, no. it's a camouflage suit. They've got a they've got a. It's, it's got like the, it's yeah. like the stuff okay. that's in your microwave to block the the, oh, the radiation. Okay. okay. Uh, but th th I mean, they're a, they're a million dollar company. Uh -huh. uh, they sell they sell uh, a lot of different clothes have hex technology in them. But it blocks your EMF from getting out. It's proven that animals can sharks. Okay, sharks. You know what a shark is, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying you're from no, you're from no, Utah. I just don't Salt Lake what? Salt Lake doesn't have sharks. I'm just asking. Sharks can pick Dad, up. Welcome to Iowa. He yeah. Reported on the radio about big ones. He's like, I don't know. The sharks can they hunt hey, by we, picking we gotta, up. We got to take a break. <laughs> yeah, I do got to take a break. They, sharks can hunt with. Uh, they pick up the electric field yes. of other things, right? Uh huh. Divers wear that hex technology okay. in their wetsuits. Yeah, yeah. You know, to keep from sharks picking them up. So I'm just, I'm. My theory I is, the I'm theory. The passion, I'm, if deer and turkey and other game can <laughs> sue that, why couldn't uh, Squatchy? There, there you go. And you it's a government conspiracy. <laughs> it's, it, it's a Biden thing. I'm telling it's you. A, All right, wait. We got, we got to take a break. Uh, working class bow hunters, where can they find you? Right next to you at the Iowa show. No, where can they find you? Workingclassbowhunter.com. Yeah. There's Everywhere you find podcasts. YouTube. Uh, uh, everywhere everywhere just look us up just look up working class bow hunters Over there the tattooed man yeah that's it. you can feel the judgment yeah. and, and if you want to if judgment. you want to see uh you want to see this gentleman or uh get some information about hunts get a hold of kurt
That's right. Go. I'm the middle Thanks, man. Dan. You're welcome. No, thank you guys for okay, coming man. out. I know you guys were out having uh, late night sushi last night. So. Yeah, late night sushi. That, that sounds sweet. bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like gas station sushi. No, I, I, you're above that. You're, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. no, we're not. All right, All right we got to run. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. We'll be right back on 1350 ESPN. <laughs> Dan, I love your passion for the Bigfoot, man. Hey, I'm just trying to get eyeballs on the show. I man. love it. Dude, <laughs> hey, awesome. All about the Dude, hey, hey thanks, seen, but thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, I appreciate you. Yeah. Have you seen that with the Nelk boys where they prank that guy on finding a, a Bigfoot? So they go with this like expert like Dan to go look for Bigfoot. There, there you go, Joey. Hey, Jim. Gene, there you go. Hey, Jeff. Andrew, you there? Uh, I know I went long on that. We still got how many big breaks? Two more? Aw, you brought me coffee too. Oh man, that's what. There we go, we got coffee. Morning, Jeff. Hey, Orlando. Want to hop over here with us? You don't? Okay. We'll have you talk about the, the trailers and stuff and the bikes. Kurt, love you, buddy. <laughs> Doug's a mustache machine. Doug's a mustache machine. He is, though. Yeah. yeah. Which I had a full mustache like that. Yeah, I've known Kurt even for sheep. Before they started working class, it was a it was a concept. Of what they've done with that. It's amazing. That's a great success story. They they got a they done good. It is. All the vendors are rolling in. Yep. All the vendors are rolling in. It's getting uh, almost time. It's going to be a good day. Let's make today a good one. Let's make today a good one. Taking pictures. <laughs> Morning. Good, good. If you were listening earlier to come by and see Josh Boiser's Missouri Giant. Lewis, it is here at the booth. We're right across from Forerunner Blind. Sean Lott's going to step in here in a second, too, and talk about some of that stuff. Morning, Jeff. There you go, Cheyenne. Pure white tail, baby. It made it. I tell you what, Larry, Larry and Philip. Three years ago, we went out to the the farm and they started mocking stuff up. And I said, "What is that?" He goes, "What's what?" I go, "What's that blue stuff?" Well, that's that's <laughs> pure white tail dust. Yeah. I go, "What's that?" He goes, "You don't know what that is?" I said, "No." He goes, "Come here." So they're showing me all this stuff. I said, "It's magic." It's magic. <laughs> it's magic. As God is my witness, we did that scrape. We went around the bend. Went about 400 yards. We found another place to scrape up. Got back to the truck. Within 15 minutes, we had pictures on those scrapes of deer hitting those scrapes, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And and I every year since then, from June on, I'm out there. I, my, my reveals are running. Well, you guys see them. I post them. I got scrape activity, and I had the best... I've had the best two deer seasons I've ever had, and a lot of it I, owed, I, I give to Pure White Tail. That's awesome. Good morning, Rick. Good to see you, buddy. Hi, Malcolm. Malcolm Jones. Malcolm, hey, how's it going, buddy? We'll come back. Sean, I'll have you grab that third mic. There you go. Yeah. 
All right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. We are live at the Iowa Deer Classic. Doors open up at 9 o'clock. There's another another fine feller from Working Class Bow Hunter strolling by. Uh, they're going to be uh, till 7 tonight. Show tomorrow is going to be 10 to 4. Military Day tomorrow, Military Appreciation Day. Come on out. We got Josh's giant buck here in the booth. You're going to want to see this one, the best, uh, biggest white, uh, non typical deer. Uh, taken in Missouri for sure, and uh, just a stud. Sean's over here, our buddy Sean, Sean from Lots Outdoors, uh, over in uh, St. Peter's, Illinois. And uh, Sean, I do. Uh, we work with the the e bikes and stuff with Sean. Grab that mic, Sean. Just hold it up. And uh, we, uh, Sean, I, thanks for uh, coming over. Hey, uh, we were talking about the blinds earlier on the show. Those blinds are awesome. I, I don't know of another. Uh, 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 what would you call that, Larry? Like a a, uh, a skeletonized blind, the metal. Is, yeah. that, is that how you describe it? It's that thing will stand in what, any kind of weather. I mean, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, that thing is is great for as you know. You got two or three people. You need to be in the blind. That that's going to be the way to go. But the way that uh, you guys have done that at Forerunner, you can move that blind by yourself. Yeah, you just pop the wheels up and it'll go. You can pull it. You can pull it with your e bike or side by side. It'll change the four wheeler. Four wheeler. Yeah, I mean, it's it just uh, hook it up and go. And then, and when you're done hunting, you can pull the skin off of it, and, and you don't have to worry about it getting weathered or uh, messed up or anything. And then, when you're ready to hunt, you, a couple weeks out, you go put the skin back on. Yeah, it don't take but five minutes to put that skin on and zip it in, and you're ready to go. Yeah, that's awesome. The other thing, it's light, so you can put it if you on a platform too. So if you wanted to, to elevate it, get it off the ground, you could do that as well, right? Yeah, it's 60 pounds. You can lift it up. Two guys can lift it up on a platform. So when you're gun hunting, you can take it, and then if you want to get down and go turkey hunting or during the rut, you can move it real easy. Yep. E-bikes, uh, that's really becoming a lot of rages, especially for folks that, uh, you know, they don't want to pack in if you got a, you got a couple. You know, I always said if you're going to hunt public ground, if you want to get away from everybody, if you can walk in a half mile to a mile, you're going to be by yourself a lot because people won't, usually won't walk that far. E-bikes have uh, made it a lot easier for people. Yeah, e-bikes are changing the game, whether you're uh, – running mock scrapes like we do with our PW stuff or trail cameras or feeding, um, setting up stands that change the game, keeps your scent out and get in and out quicker. So we all know being off the property saves you a lot of hustle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're not, and you're not burning gas and, uh, educating the deer while you're out there. Correct. Yeah. It's not, so you guys got a whole bunch of that going on. You sold a bunch yesterday. Yes, we did. And you, and my humble opinion, you guys got the best trailer system I've ever seen on an e-bike or a four wheeler. Uh, you got to come out here. If you're going to come out here, uh, they're right across from us. You got to check them out because you can not only use it to haul your e-bike around, but that's you, that. If, if you're deer hunting by yourself, you, all you got to do is roll the deer in. You don't have to pick it up. I mean, yeah, it's functionality a, of that is amazing. Yeah, Darren uh, out of Leon, Iowa, has changed the game as far as transport systems go. It doubles as your hauler, and then when you get there, you can use it for your stands. You can use it to haul out your deer. It just slides right up. Yep. Tell them where the store is, Lots Outdoors. Lots Outdoors in St. Peter, Illinois. And then if you need anything from Forerunner, they're locally here in Leon, Iowa. Yeah, and you can help them on on all of it. Yes, yes, I can. Yep, all right. You're also uh, Pure Whitetail? Somebody wants Pure Whitetail? Yes, anything you need from Pure Whitetail, you can come to us at Lots Outdoors or LotsOutdoors.com. All right, buddy, thank you. Thank you, guys. He's a good boy. Oh, and he's a vet. And he's a vet. Good, good guy right there. All right, uh, we got uh, 8.32 and some change. Let me hit another quick break so I can get caught up. I was talking to Kurt too long, got behind. We'll be right back on 13.50 ESPN. Scuba, what's up, buddy? Uh, Just getting ready to chase turkeys. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a good fall? Good. Morning. Watch my niece shoot too. That's where it's getting to be more exciting anymore. Is watching her shoot deer than me shoot deer. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Are you getting ready for hunting season? Well, you've just that's time to go fish. Now the time is getting. Yeah, they're catching. They're catching some fish. Yeah. I just got my boat back. I blew it up. Opening weekend to snagging last year. Snagging opens the fifteenth, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, trout season's open now. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it 
if you want to taste these snacks, they will do a great job making snacks that that far from being Chris and Cheyenne, you are exactly right. Good stuff. Pure, pure whitetail, buddy. For sure. If you get lucky this year and use a good locker, try the Milo locker. I mean, I've literally transformed some of the properties we've been on just with by utilizing scrapes, changing the way the deer use the property and everything. Well, that's the thing, you know, people we talk about a lot, and it's because we, you know, because we believe in it. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I just, I've never seen anything work like, I've used, I've tried it before over the years, and I just haven't, I, I just, and it's not going to work every time. I mean, there's some scrapes that you're going to have to go try another scrape, but man, when it works, it's, it's money. The thing is, I think it, I, and honestly, I'm, I'm getting to where I believe it, it can work every time. If it be, just some, some locations, it takes longer. Well, that could be. For them to, yeah. you know what I mean, for them to, uh, you know, get established. And, and some, if you're in the right area, then it, uh. Thank you, Gene. Uh, then it, you know, formulates a lot quicker. Yeah. Well, like at Andy's property, I know I put one out and I they didn't they didn't hit it, but the one 150 yards away, they they were on fire on it, you know. But you're probably right, it, you know. They're going to run that run. And the thing is, though, is, is stick with what's working. If you start off with the product, stay with that product. Chris says location is key. Yep. Yeah. So. So if, if 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 I'm not seeing light sign, but I want to deer there, I'll put. I'll put a mock scrape there, but I won't. I'll put a couple closer together so they can start to gravitate that direction, then start to spread it out. Then they start to be frequent. Well, that makes sense. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. So high traffic areas, obviously, and, and then if you know your properties, you see them that just been scraped, put another one there close, because that scrape may not be in the most optimal spot to hunt the right wind, so you can actually put another mock scrape there, and now they're hitting both scrapes, so where you're going to watch the deer hit the other one and not have an opportunity, you're putting, a, you're putting a scrape in there where you will have an opportunity. I, I just, I mean, I from July July on, I had well, we had big bucks on those, and I sh that's why I got done early last year because they were they were hitting those lines. I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, if you, <laughs> and it takes some commitment just doing it. Jim, I agree with you. Those those uh those reveals, the the SK and uh, the new Pro models that uh, that Tacticam reveal came out with. I get cell reception where other people can't with my camera. That, that they're awesome. I tell you, and that, another thing too with the, with the dust, he got me hooked on with my Dave Smith buck decoy. That's why he's getting those bucks to hammer them, man. He's employing that uh, the PW. It looks like a skittle bag inside the decoy. Yeah, it does. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, how we doing? All right, buddy. All right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio Show with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. We are live at the Iowa Deer Classic. Doors open up in about, uh, what, uh, 20, 22 minutes, so it's going to be here pretty quick. Got Larry McCoy with me from Respect to Game TV, the outdoor group. Uh, hey, real quick, I, I want to hit uh, on uh, the, the new releases from Scott real quick. Um, I, I have not I have not got to shoot this release yet, but from everything you've told me, I want one, and that's the S2. Yeah, the S2 is a, it's a, it's a double sear release, and which, uh, and that, which is, very customizable to the shooter, uh, super crisp. Uh, if you can, you can adjust the trigger travel and also uh, the trigger tension very, very easily, and really almost micro adjust it. The, the other thing too is if you if you're a thumb button shooter, you like a, a thumb button. This this 
a lot of the mechanism and how it works is similar to a thumb button, but able to use as a wrist strap, uh, wrist strap index dial release. Uh, and like I said, you can. It's an open hook design that is uh, super super crisp. I like it because you can adjust the length. Uh, literally, uh, every every time you can make any adjustment to to get the release to fire exactly when you want it to fire, uh, which is important. Uh, because that way, because everybody kind of has, every, you talk about shot timing, you know, when they come to full draw, some people just like to aim. They want to make sure their dot is right there. Some people, they, they just know their shot timing. So having that release set perfect to where it's going to go off within that, that time frame is important. And this release really allows you to do that. I know it's a little bit deep when it comes to shooting and a lot, but that's how, and it's stuff that you acquire that you don't never necessarily think about as a shooter. But it's happening, you know, it just happens naturally. And then when you start to really think about shot timing, you aiming and you're counting in your head. Some people, it may be three seconds, some people, it may be 10 seconds. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, it feels well, I, like an eternity when you're full draw. Oh, I get it. I get it. And like, I know last year I shot the Verge and I'm, I'm still shooting it, but I mean, it, that, that release actually made me a better shot, especially mm -hmm. with the click in it. Yep. Now, I know Ryan said he didn't like the click. Yeah, uh, some people don't. I, I, I liked it because I knew when I'm. Well, I know when I'm aiming and I start squeezing, uh, and it's a wrist strap release. And, but I, I, I shoot it with these two fingers. I start. I start bringing these fingers in, and I hear that click. I know it's gonna fire. It's ready to fire, mm -hmm. and then that just helped me focus and aim more. That's why I, I, I made two. I mean, I'm not bragging, folks, but I made two really good shots, and those. I got two nice bucks last year. And I know that verge made me a better shot. Yeah, well, it keeps you it keeps you honest. I mean, it really makes you go through uh, the correct shot process. Yeah. Because in the heat of the moment, let's face it. I mean, it, you, you know, you're worked up, and it's easy to yeah. to rush things. And well, I'm a puncher. Yeah. I punch. You, and that, you that said that release yeah. helps that, keep keeps you honest as far yeah. as squeezing through and really making sure the pin is where you want, and really helps you pick a spot. Yeah. No, it, it definitely helped me. So I think the S2, I'm, I'm anxious similar, to try very, it. Very similar, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Larry Mack, we got uh, we got about 20 minutes left. So I'm going to finish the show talking a little turkey strategy with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dave Smith has got that new uh, pruning uh, pruning pin. Pruning pin, yep. Yep. So you, 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 hey, Al, how's it going, buddy? Al down at uh, our buddy Andy's yeah, uh, farm. Hey, Al. Al says there was a Tom Goblin right by your tree stand this morning. <laughs> Thanks, Al. That makes me feel good, man. Al, he's scouting for you. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> hey, Pam, thank you for watching. Chris, thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah Chris Chris says he's a puncher, too. Yeah. Yeah, Larry, he, Larry's always good for my self-esteem. He goes, why are you holding your bowl like this? <laughs> and it, it, But I did lengthen it out. I did. He was right. I was. I didn't know I was doing that. But I didn't know I was punching until he saw me. But well, I, you don't. That's the thing. Yeah, you don't I, as I a did. shooter until, and when somebody's, you know, actually watching, you, just like you know, shooting long or shooting short, yeah. you shoot where how you're comfortable. But uh, a lot of it too is how you aim because people are used to seeing their pin float like that and being getting it to settle down. There's a lot of ways to do that. Sometimes it's draw length. You know, sometimes it's your weight. You yeah. Know, uh, your stabilizer system or, or whatever. But that. Yeah. So hey, I always want to learn and be better. So I I, I appreciate the help. Uh, turkey seasons. DS Dave's got those new pruning hens. Um, I know. I know. I mean, you've been hunting with me enough. I, I like putting a, a Jake out, and I like an alert feeding hen and a breeding hen. That's usually my go-to setup. What what is a prune, What is that pruning hen? Is that just? Is that more of a contentment look? I mean, yeah. What is what? So, what are they? What 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 drove that? That, that decoy so obviously if uh, if uh, if you have a hen that's preying yourself which all of them do we've seen it when they're relaxed they're not keyed up they're not keyed up on on uh, uh, you know alert and and acting like there's something up so it really kind of relaxes other birds when they see other birds relaxed in your set so uh, I think that could be a very valuable add-on to your decoy setup for that reason especially as it gets a little bit later in the season and the birds get more educated and they've been hunted, uh, it, it'll definitely add a lot. And Dave Smith, you know, that the birds look about as real as they, they could look. Yeah. You know, so it's uh, having that in there, I think, could be very valuable to your setup. What about uh, now? You got me hooked on that Jake Strutter a couple of years ago, and then you got the, the other Strutter. You, you, you switch up your decoys a lot, and you, you've told me, I don't know how many times, the fan. The, the real fe the fan feathers 
that's that's a that's a that's a difference maker. Oh, it is. Uh, I mean, I, I put even the butt feathers uh, on my fans. I just hot glue the butt feathers. I, I take them off. Tell the them what that is if they don't know. So when you look at when you spread a turkey's fan out, Tom Turkey's fan out, they've got the little feathers that they just kind of float. They're really light and fluffy on the, uh, you know, right by their butt. And so I usually will just cut them off and, and save those two to put on my turkey fans because for multiple reasons. One, it just adds realistic. Uh, value to your setup uh, for a couple reasons. There's those calm days when it's really light breeze and your decoy doesn't have any movement, so it's just sitting there. Well, that's one way that you can add a little movement is because with that light breeze, it that feathers will just move. And I've, I've closed a lot of birds and had some success. I truly believe because of that right there. And it's super easy to do. Like once you take it off and they're dried out, hot glue gun, super glue, whatever, right on the back of your uh, turkey fan that you're putting in your decoy. Yeah. Uh, and it just adds a lot of, of, you know, motion and makes it even look, you know. Realistic. Even, yeah, it looks realistic. like a bird, yeah. a real bird. That's yeah. awesome. 844, 8045 and some change. Uh, real, I'm going to take a real quick break. Let's see what Andrew's texting me real quick here. Hang on. Uh, use passcode. I don't want to use my passcode. Yeah, he's probably texting you. Uh, we got well, I know Andrew. Uh, all right. Hey, uh. Yardage. If you're bow hunting, ten to twelve yards. Now you you were you shooting them at five yards. Okay. Yeah. Now what do you recommend for shooting as far as just distance on decoy spreads? Oh, from I where mean, you're at. It depends on your setup, but I mean, if you're hunting with a shotgun, I mean, twenty five yards is probably optimal. It's going to give it's going to give plenty of time for your your shot to get out there yeah. and have a good good pattern for and also provide you with a little room for air. Yeah. Bow setup. If you're gonna I mean, I like to sit up as close as I can, but it depends on the setup on where you need to be. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, obviously you have a smaller kill zone with a bow, so if you can get them in closer so you can really uh, I know. concentrate on picking a spot, it will be it's it makes it that much more effective. Yeah, and he, he made an awesome shotgun. We're going to we're gonna talk shotguns when we come back real quick because he made an awesome shot last year on the show. Uh, we'll be right back. We're live at the Deer Classic. You're listening to Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 SPN. Tired or not sleeping or feeling pain all day? No, that you know. <laughs> Andrew, are we okay? Can you hear that music in the background? Is it too loud? It's Doctor playing in the background. Okay. I've been using the CBD lotion and saw back. What's the best choke tubes for that are out there today? Hank one. Man, I'll tell you, I, uh, from Jeb's is good, and I could. I, I will say this. I know that the uh, there's a lot of choke tubes out there in the market. Uh, Jeb's, uh, basically with some uh, Apex, some of the TSS loads and stuff like that, it's proven to be pretty deadly. And, and no matter what, really, what uh, what gun you're using, but but there's it's particular on what size choke tube you get, and so there's a lot that goes into it. But Jeb's is is the one I'm consistently hearing. Indian Creek makes a good one. Even Primo's Jelly Head uh, is, a, is a really good choke tube as well. They've done a lot, uh, came a long ways as well. Here you go. I tell you, Hank, right now that TSS shot is amazing. If you want to get into, you want to get in tight patterns at a distance, that TSS is, we'll talk about that because that's what you used on. Didn't you use that Apex? What was yeah. it? Is it Apex? Apex, yeah. yeah. There you go, Jim. There are a lot of good chokes out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you even you even know a guy that what you say that guy that customizes. Uh... Yeah, yeah. There, and there's a lot of that. That's what I mean. It just depends on the shotgun, the TSS loads. It depends on kind of what you what you choose to shoot because TSS, you know, it's got a lot more shot uh, in there because they're mixing, you know, uh, you know, seven and halves and nines and sixes, eights and nines and. So there's a lot of shot in that little little area. So to be able to 
to travel faster and at a longer distance and, and maintain a pattern. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool to see um, what some of these companies have done through their testing with the TSS patterns and seeing what they do at distance all the way from 4, 10, 28 gauge all the way up to 12 gauge. Uh, it's it's pretty cool to see how it's resp- how how the patterns respond at 50 plus yards. Will do, Bill. Where are we at, Andrew? How much? On the break? Okay, thank you. I'll tell you what, too. Hey, when you come by uh, come by the booth today, we're right next to MagView. If you're if you're a guy that scouts a lot, uh, that that wants to go out and literally learn your property, watch it from a distance. If you're going out west, they've got a super cool device that hooks to your spotting scope. You can hook your, hook your phone right to it as well, and uh, it's it's just a, it's a really cool cool piece. I was over there looking at it earlier, and it's uh, I mean I was pretty impressed with just the way it snaps right onto the front of your spotting scope. Ryan liked it. If Ryan likes it, we like it. Yeah. Actually, uh, Josh bought one of those whenever he was scouting Lewis. Oh, really? Uh, there and, and utilized uh, that too on, on his spotting scope to, to kind of get some intel on what the deer was doing. Definitely a cool product. Is there a line formulating out there? I bet there is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there'll be a rush when that door opens. Yeah. I know you got excited because you thought that was chew. Right? <laughs> I looked at the cap and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, Doug, man, he, he's something else. Sounds good. A Chick fil A chicken biscuit. I could go for that right now. Uh, Man. Talk. Yeah. Do what, Andrew? All right, welcome back to the Outdoor Call Radio with Outdoors Dan on 1350 ESPN. Last segment of the show. Real quick, uh, hey, uh, we got a bunch of Chevy trucks down here. If you're looking for a new ZR2 or Trail Boss, uh, come out here, check them out, and then go see Smoking Joe Smelter over at Carl Chevrolet off Oral Labor Road. He will make you a Smoking Joe kind of deal and save you a bunch of money. And uh, they got some really good incentives going on right now, so get out there and take advantage of them. I absolutely love my ZR2. It's my favorite truck I've ever had, and I love my Trail Boss. But that new camera system on that ZR2 is amazing. So go check them out at Carl Chevrolet and ask for Smoking Joe Smelter, and he'll take really good care of you, I promise. Also, I want to say thanks to Dr. Scott Obi-Wan Kenobi-Yagi. If you need to have a dentist or you're new to the area, 
Go check out uh, Advanced Family Dentistry out in Ankeny. They've been voted number one dental practice every year for a reason. That's because their people treat you right. No matter general dentistry, if you need cosmetic dentistry, they do it all right there. And he's a Jedi dentist because I'm such a big baby when it comes to the dentist. He uses the force to, to calm me down and take it easy. As a matter of fact, he's got the force so strong with him. When you leave, he says, may the floss be with you. Advanced Family Dentistry, Dr. Scott Obi. Thank you, Obi-Wan. I appreciate that. Dr. Scott, Obi-Wan Kenobi Yagi. All right, hey, Larry Mack, we got about uh, a couple minutes left. TSS shot. That, tell everybody about your hunt real quick in Missouri last year because when you guys put that in slow-mo, that was just amazing. Yeah, the uh, actually the guys, from, the guys from Small Town Hunting actually introduced me to the TSS uh, stuff because normally I'm, I, I'm not opposed to uh, shooting turkeys with a shotgun, bow, it doesn't really matter uh, to me. I enjoy all of it, but... Uh, so they introduced me to it, so I, we got to digging in, and they were educating me on, on it, and I was just totally impressed with uh, with what I was seeing, shooting side-by-side side some of the older turkey loads through the new TSS with the mixed uh, mixed shot. And so the turkey last year, you know, he came in. It's not like he was outrange. I mean, he was 20 yards, but coming in, the bird uh, came in, from a long ways away, coming to work the decoy over, Good morning, everybody. but really showing the, when we slowed it down, you could see literally the whole shot pattern, and it was amazing how perfect it was. Yeah. You know, there wasn't like, you know, like an oblong shape, there wasn't like, it was just like everything was in a ball, just, I mean, perfect, I just big up to work. I mean, I literally, I had a lot of room for air, and I just happened to, uh, it just literally, I don't think a shot missed his head. <laughs> no, I, 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 that, I, that was, was that was incredible. Go to go to respect the game's YouTube page and check it out. You're going to be pretty impressed. Hey, speaking of turkeys, I'm going to be at uh, uh, Sportsman's Warehouse next weekend, Saturday, probably between 10:30 and 11. We're going to do a turkey camp for kids. Bring the kids out. I'm going to let them run some Rupert's Roost and Peace turkey calls. We're going to let you put them in for a drawing. We're going to give away some calls, and I've got a couple. I think three DSD D, uh, turkey decoys. We're going to let the kids try to win. So come on at the Sportsman's Warehouse in Ankeny next Saturday. Let's just say 11 o'clock. I'll see you out there at 11. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun talking turkey next week. So, hey, Andrew, uh, they're letting everybody in. I'm going to go ahead and can we uh, we say goodbye and let you finish the show for me. And uh, we will, uh, is that all right? All right. We'll let everybody go. Larry Mack, thank you, buddy. Ryan, you bet. thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate all the help this weekend. We'll see you next time. Be good to one another. We're all in it together. If you haven't downloaded the Outdoor Call Radio app, please do. And like Larry said, go to the website and subscribe because you're going to want to do that. We've got a big fishing trip we're going to be giving away this summer. You're going to want to stay tuned for that. We'll be see you at the Deer Classic, booth 905. Until then, God bless. See you next time. We'll Bye, see everybody. Guys. See you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate you. The Mac Man and the Ryan. Have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. Come by and see us. Come by and see us. We'll see you later.